I don't know who the host is. Uh, <laughs> Drive, baby. <laughs> I'm ready. I was I was ready to to get into it. Me and Tyler, I think for the first time since we've ever met, uh, got show notes together to get into it because we don't have, I don't know, like 12 meandering hours a week to eventually hit on everything. And so I was thinking, what should we start with? What should we start with? Right before we hopped on, this jersey, this very jersey you see me wearing, or hear me wearing if you're listening, just touched down, and I couldn't be more excited. Withers asked if it was the Pedro. It is not. Would it, I can only see the uh, the Montreal. So it's... The 12 boy. Mix not wearing pants for some reason. Oh, bro. Oh, come on with this. That's right. Ike, you can cut all of this. <laughs> yeah, I remember him hitting 157. Dingers, yeah, maybe. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what you recall, but yeah, I was on. I was on Mitchell and Ness the other week. Yeah, I said it. I was on the website perusing as I'm one to do. I always click the Expos tab. You never know what's going to be on there. And boy, did my eyes light up like Christmas goddamn morning when I saw they had the Brady. You kidding me? Well, the, the Tommy Heinsohn was out of stock. <laughs> they just run all the all the hits. Give me a break. I don't have. I don't like it no more. It was a good. It should have just had no name on the back. It should just been twelve. I was like, who is twelve? That was Pedro's brother, right? Uh, Jose Vidro. Yeah. Who, who are you rocking with right now? Uh, this is my third Expos jersey. It's become a habit. And you keep getting uh, Celtic shows. I keep getting Expos jerseys. <laughs> The only Celtic shows to be people hear one thing Celtic and be like, "Yep, that's a Celtic show." And you get branded that. It's a very nasty tag to have. It's very nasty, but that's neither here nor there. Trill Simmons over here, guy won't stop talking <laughs> about the Celtics. Yeah, no. Oh, yeah, you know how much I love them. Uh, we'll get to it though. We, like I said, we have a list. On top of the list, you said you had three. Unrelated thoughts. So I want to lead off with one of the unrelated thoughts and then pepper them in throughout the show. Okay, well, first things first, the list of three is up to five. Five! So, unrelated. Yeah, I don't five. know if we have the budget for five. Unrelated I don't think we have. Um, I don't even know what. I'll just go in order. One, Wimbenyama on any play-in team right now could make the finals. Who are the play-in teams? Are the Hawks a play-in team? It don't even really, it almost don't even really matter. Okay. If you just throw him on the, I don't know, I will look to be, I know the Bulls are in there. The Bulls are destined to dominate the play-in, and then mm. we'll see. The Heat 7. You throw Wimbenyami on the Heat, that's easy I money. I don't need that. <laughs> no. The Sixers are now the A seed. You just get him and Embiid going. Uh, Bulls the 9 seed. Hawks still the 10 seed because the Hawks, or excuse me, because the Nets Refuse to to make up any ground. Out west, Mavericks, Suns, Warriors, Lakers. If they just got to add Wimbenyama right now, right this second, they win in two rounds of the playoffs, man. Are you? They, uh, maybe I should say at least comfort, maybe matchup dependent. Uh, but they could win win multiple rounds of the playoffs. He's that legit right now. I don't care you, what their team record is. You put him on on Dallas. You're taking touches away from Danny Gafford. Who's just Wilt Chamberlain reincarnate? I don't know. I, maybe he can get them some water. He can reach. Look at the whole bench. You know what I mean? He could be good for morale in Dallas. They love life. It was the, the picture where the guys are walking around and looking back. It's they were walking at first with Derek Lively, but he's looking back at Daniel Gafford. <laughs> you get Wimbenyama in there. He just. I mean, he just does. By tomorrow, he'll have downloaded the Kyrie game-winning hook shot, and Wimbenyama's like, "Oh, that's smooth. I should try that from three. That shot was preposterous. It like when when Dame hit that pull up and Paul George immediately was like, "That's a bad shot." That's where my mind went. With I was like, "That's a terrible <laughs> shot," but boy, oh boy, was it sick! Like I I don't want to tweet that because people will only read that it's a bad. Sh- oh, Celtics fan hates Kyrie. That's not it. Terrible, like not a good idea at all. But the fact there's that a mid range. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You know, <laughs> contested too. It's not Missoula ball. 
I, the best part of all the slow mo shots is I don't even like I've seen it's incredible shot. I've seen enough angles of that. I just like to catch an angle every single Denver Nuggets face because they're all like, "What the fuck? Like, what can you? Even, <laughs> well, they're all like, what, Aaron Gordon's like, there's maybe one person alive that could do that, and he's right there, yeah. and he just did it. So what? What even can you do? You live with that shot if you're Denver, and Denver, they're. I don't think they're. They've already forgotten that happened. They're like, yeah, hey, we'll get them next time. Like, I don't think they care at all. Not in the slightest. That's why, like, you could see that they processed it all in that moment. Like, ah, oh, man, that stinks. What can you do? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Game 64. To on to yeah, the, yeah, to we'll, <laughs> we'll catch them next time. But that's the first random thought. Women Yama, any playing team, I think they can make the finals. He's been horrifying. And I was listening to him talk. Someone asked him about how his rookie season has gone and and what growth he's seen. And I wanted to call him cocky, but it, it he was just saying everything so matter-of-factly. He was like, man, I still kind of stink compared to what I'm going to be. And it's like, I, I believe him. I, I'm on his side here. I If the Spurs are not in the play-in play in pl- slash play-in mix next year, it might be time to take uh, – pop out back man and get, get get a real coach in there not unlike myself if they're not in a play in mix next year because i think they have so much I, just low-hanging fruit to cut out like the first quarter of the season was just point guard so high cut that out immediately victor playing power forward that was like 20 25 cut that out immediately like a lot of one he's playing like 26 minutes a game bump that up like i feel like that's three sure. things right there that will get you they're like 15 wins now. We're at 26 already. And we haven't <laughs> added any like draft picks, anything. And I don't know. He's, he's very scary to me. Horrifying. Um, the minutes obviously will help. And I've seen people be like, why are they doing this? I trust the Spurs. Even like Pop, every time they ask him something Wemby did, he's like, I, I'd rather talk about wine. So I, he's <laughs> half in, half out right now. That's why I need you all in, man. This is something like they can compete depending on what they do this off season. Like I, I was like, they need to be on Drew Holiday's line. Not that he would leave, but, but you got to make them. I don't know what Drew's max is at this point. It's probably legit like four two fifty. I, like I, I have no idea what it is. Cause he's been, it's like his fifth contract. Right. You got to make the Celtics match that if they even physically can. Like, I don't even know I, with the new cap limits anymore. I don't know what, what's possible is why I say I that. cut all of this. I don't need this out. No, no. This first. part stays, like The other part's they, still out. The, I saw you tweet about this yesterday. I, I called the police. They said there was nothing they could do uh, at all. But I, I kept trying different branches to see if, if someone out there was at least a loose cannon uh, to no avail. Yeah, Drew's not going anywhere. I don't, I don't care for <laughs> That at all. They throw that Fred Van Fleet off at him, whatever that looks like. 4 1. Again, I don't know his max or what his numbers are, but you want to come here and not score 12 points a game, Drew? Come on down. But they're the 12 easiest points he's ever scored, you understand. He's having a blast. They're going to be pretty easy in San Antonio. Not like not with Sohan like also guarding him because he thinks he's the point guard still. I don't I don't know that he wants to deal with all that. We'll hammer all that out. I'm very unconcerned. Drew's going nowhere. Uh, you're never going to beat the Celtics allegations if you're the one who brings them up. Uh, like this. I'm, listen, I'm bringing up future Spur. This is a Spurs podcast now. That Buddy Hill, I would sign Buddy Hill to like. I like Buddy Hill. Things. That's I would genuinely go get Buddy Hill because it doesn't really matter about his defense. Like, oh, you got by Buddy Hill. Good At luck. All. Good luck. At all. For like one, what if they're whatever they used to do with like JJ Reddick? Hey, here's one year, twenty million. Now I'm sure that's like thirty. Mm. It's like, hey, buddy, just short term contract. Come, always play. You're only playing the minutes he plays. Like he will always have that on the court. And some small tweaks like that, man, they should be looking at in the uh, double their wins total. For sure. And I, I saw I was when I saw you were talking about this. I went and looked at free agency. And the number one guy is Maxi. It's like, all right, well, I, I think Philly's a pretty poorly run organization. I assume they'll max anything on Maxi. But I was also looking uh, towards the bottom of the list. They had Xavier Tillman ranked a little too lowly for my liking. There were a lot of scrubs ahead of him. You are a spur, Tillman. 
<laughs> I'm playing the two. Um, Fine with it. Upgrade. But I saw Gary Harris, a player I've always liked. Do you know what Gary Harris's career earnings are? Oh, gosh. This should be fun. Do you know what draft he was in? I'm just trying to get a range for how many years he's... <sighs> was it, it was 13, played. wasn't it? I was going to say, I was going to give him a decade. Gary Harris, 115. Let me let me find the draft first. 2014, he, know, 2014 20, draft. Okay, so this is a decade for him. I remember he got like 80 from Denver. Right. That's the bulk of it. I think lottery pick, so he had those four. I'll go one, one, 112 is my final, final number. So the number I saw last night, and I don't think it had this year's salary in it, so I think you're probably, it's probably closer to yours. The number that I think it was Hoops Hype, Hoops Hype had was 95. So factoring in whatever he makes this year. What a life. Like, I, like unbelievable. And I'm not pocket watching. I love, like I said, I like Gary Harris a lot. Right. I, it's just so fun being like, yeah, these guys, if you're just in the league a decade and you were at all good at any, like I think about like Alec Burks. Remember when Alec Burks got that big deal from what was it, Utah? It's like, yeah, that guy's probably sitting on nine figures as well. And that rules. A guy that just retired, Otto Porter. <sighs> I think he did one whatever that contract like the Nets gave him and the Washington Matt. I think that was a hundred in itself. Yeah, it was. And he go, what's, what's it called when you pocket watching, but it's in a good way, <laughs> like good. Like I support you, King. Get your dollars. They, we need two different terms. Like gla- pocket glazing. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it stopped me in my tracks. I was like, fuck it. This guy just lives a mile from Disney. Doesn't even need to go. He could buy the whole park if he wanted to. Not too concerned. Having a great time. But great time. He, the thing with Maxie and Quickly as well, because I was like, if they didn't, after Drew, or in addition, I think the Spurs have like all the cap space. I would hope so. With Maxie, Philly definitely matches, but you know they're going to want to do other stuff. So I feel like that you have to throw that offer immediately. Immediate. Yeah. They'll match it, but uh, like, stop them from doing other stuff. Quickly is the interesting one because I'm sure Toronto right now could definitely get him on something very fair. But if the Spurs come in with something unfair, <laughs> like where the Raptors planning on paying, I don't know what their max is, but like max money for Quickly, who I love. And if I was the Spurs, I would just do it, like do it to the number matters a whole lot less at this point. Sure. So I would do that, make the match. They probably do as well. But make him do it. Even if you even if you make them match, you're still get, letting him hit free agency a year sooner. It's like the Gordon Hayward shit with Charlotte. Like the right. Spurs can't offer five years. So if you're like, hey, we like quickly either now or when Wemby's uh, rookie contract is up, this is the best way to go about it. We either force him into a four year so he's on the exact same line as Wemby, or we just get him because Toronto's too poor. And I, I think it's pretty fair to say Toronto has no idea what they're doing at the moment. They they uh, botched the OG uh, trade. And then they... it, it depends. Because get Barrett, who, I mean, uh, sending hard. prayers to him, man. Yeah, he's going through some, some tough stuff. So thoughts and prayers legit to him. Um, but he looked great there. Quickly's he looked did. good. So that's your return, but if the Spurs come in, it's like, man, we didn't plan on paying four one seventy for sure for quick with a last year player option. So it's really only three. Do you or do they match and go that way? Yeah, it's the Spurs can definitely mess with some teams, and I wouldn't be shocked if the Spurs had a little bit of hatred for the Raptors after that's where Kawhi went. Just a little. I'm not saying a ton of hatred, but like a little. They got Yaka Pirtle in the pick that became Keldon Johnson. Olympic gold medalist Keldon Johnson. So who's... And then traded Pirtle back to the Raptors for more of <laughs> it's, it's, it's the gift that keeps on giving. But I think the Spurs can like essentially get creative without even dipping into the picks, really. Because I've heard Definitely. they're like trade trade for Dejounte or trade. That's the one that's like that feels a bit too aggressive for me. That's like LeBron when uh, they lost Boozer for nothing, so it was like we got to get him something. So you trade all your stuff for Larry Hughes. So now sure. you're out Boozer. You essentially traded Boozer and stuff for Larry Hughes when you could have just had all three if you played it right. So. That's the one I don't know how much I would give up for. I'm not even just saying it because it's Trey. That's just the name I've seen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
but free agency, they got plenty of draft picks. They can cut. They can just stop playing bad lineups, essentially, if they want. They're not going to. If they want. Uh, if they want. Uh, but since we're on NBA, it's prime MVP debate season. And there is a new rivalry. I don't know if it's manifested itself in terms of games played yet. But Thunder Mavs uh, fans fucking hate each other. They are not fans of one another. And if I were to objectively look at Shea and Luka, it's kind of the same picture you're on. Like, they're very similar players. Flirting, harassment. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. I I get it. One guy plays for your team, the other guy doesn't. As someone who's not a fan of either of those teams, not like I hate them, but also not a fan... They're both pretty good, like pretty really right. good, uh, and they're both extremely efficient. Uh, they're calling Shea a foul merchant. Lucas seems to get plenty of looks from the free throw line as far as I'm concerned, so I don't know. <laughs> it's the same picture you're on. Right. I will say that as a noted Shea defender, I have to get it. He got the, uh, the cyber truck. Not a great look. No. Not a, not a great look for the Shea delegation. We, we have to get ahead of of that one. I saw Jose Ramirez pulled up to spring training in one, too. I think I when you that. just have hundreds of millions of dollars, you're like, yeah, I'll give it a whirl. Why not? Why not? Yeah. Guaranteed money? Mm. You remember uh, Jalen Ram- like the NFL guys, they get like an armored truck and pull up. And then they take the armored truck back. Now, baseball or NBA, they would just get the armored truck. Yeah, I bought this. I bought Brinks. Gosh. I own all of Brinks now. Yeah. It's like, did you know Gary Harris owns 51% of Brinks? <laughs> Ty made his fortune. <laughs> yeah, basketball's yeah, a side hustle. Um, who do you have in this MVP? It's the season's basically over. I think the Celtics have like yeah, 20, twenty left, games left yeah. or something like that. Twenty three, maybe. Most of them are back to backs, which I I could yell about the rest of the show. I won't because I'm a good guy. Let me see. But I, I, Fifteen. I'm looking now. Most teams have played like sixty seven to sixty eight. So we're looking at. 14 to 15. So we yeah. are in the home stretch of it. Right now, right this second, to me, it's, it's Jokic. He's still the best player. They're, yeah, right now they're at half a game back. So they'll be in that top uh, one, two, three seed mix. He probably should have just won it last year, but Summer they didn't win. He hadn't won a ring yet. So you you got to keep going by the precedent that you've established. He got the <laughs> ring now. Now, this didn't work for Giannis. Giannis didn't just get back on track when he got the wow. ring. But if I had a vote right now, even yeah, over Shea, over Luke, over everybody, I'd go Jokic right now. I don't have an argument against Jokic. I would, I would still lean Shea. I think he's – I always come back to doing the most with the least. But I would have no qualms with Jokic winning. He's – I don't know how. I don't know if he got the least, up. man. I know everyone's very high on uh, Jalen Williams. Chet's been unbelievable. Still a rookie, but unbelievable. I, I've seen a lot of people. Uh, this conversation died quick too, but it was like, is Chet even really a rookie? He he missed the whole year. He got to train in the facilities. Um, yeah, he's a rookie. He's for sure a rookie. <laughs> no doubt in my mind, a rookie. Um, and okay, so yeah, they're they're ahead of schedule. Maybe most with the least isn't the right way to put it, but they're ahead of schedule, at least I would say. Ant might be doing the most with the least. <laughs> well, I was going to say, he will be in that mix, but just on a individual player level, he's not with those guys yet. Uh-uh. He's not with those guys yet. Because Jokic don't, ain't no all-stars on Denver's team outside of him. No. So I would say, I, that's why I can't say doing the most with the least. The Jalen Williams talk is interesting, just because I've, I've seen like the top 20 or top 30. Is he top 20, top 30 right now? I don't know or even really care to get into that right now. But the fact that you can ask that question, like, a, I don't know, 140 games into a guy that was picked 12th. And it's like, man, wait, nobody's ever going to get the draft right. Oklahoma, Oklahoma City passed on him like three times and still got him 12th. They got Chet 2 and Williams 12th in that draft. And... He's a real deal. Like he he will be an all star. Him and Chet will be all stars. I would say Yoka. Who do you got right now? I still lean Shea. Shea yeah. yeah, but I like I said, I don't have an argument against Jokic. And I'm tired of everyone 
saying, no, I have my guy and I'm going to tear down this other guy even when there's really nothing to say. If Jokic wins, I think it's... I think he's owed one, to be quite frank. I think it was he was the right pick last year, so I don't think it would be some travesty if he won his third, especially now if we're talking about the historical precedent that everyone was so horrified about last year because he has the ring, and he may well be on, on route to number two in a month in a couple of months here. So I don't think it's, it's some travesty if he wins his third. For me, I just think Shea's been so consistent. Like, he's breaking... KD scoring records, like most 30-point games in a season, that that shit's absurd. And I don't know that that's getting enough, like, wait, what? Like, that that should be getting a lot more headline attention because he's been so consistent for years, but even to a ins- more insane level this year with how night in, night out, it's just like, yeah, I'm going to go get my my 31, uh, 11, and 8 every night. And it's it's... With plus defenses, now people are picking apart his defense. He has a guard, don't forget, so it's guard defense. It's yeah, never space mattered. anyway. So. Yeah, Two steals and a block, man. That's... <laughs> Stocks, bad news. <laughs> but yeah, I'm looking at Jalen Williams, uh, runner-up rookie of the year last year. Now he's at 19, four and four and a half, about 1.7 stocks per game. Shooting at least, he's shooting 45% from three on three attempts a game, 54% overall. He's Are good he at pros? everything. I yeah, think they appeal with him. He's good at everything. He sure is. Uh, I It's even just looking it up, I typed in the other Jalen Williams. I'm like, this guy stinks. And that's, oh, yeah, it's not the right one. Like, <laughs> two I, and two. <laughs> drafting multiple Jalen Williams in the same draft, being like, one of them's going to hit. <laughs> it's insane behavior. I mean, it worked. It sure did. The thing for the Thunder, like, again, what we were talking about building with Wimbenyama, it's like, this is Shea's. That's what I was checking to see. This is your number five for Shea and OKC. Now, Wimby is a rookie and Shea is a rookie is, like, light years. Sure. Light years apart. But we're talking about OKC now and year number five for Shea. He is 25. His young guns are both year two guys. But you see how long it took for that. So it's like you don't want to fast forward Wimby too fast. Which is why, I don't know, either Rob Dillingham or Reed Shepard to San Antonio will will move mountains, is what I understand. <laughs> Dilling- and maybe they might get a Raptors pick, too, depending on how their season finished. Dillingham waving off the Wemby screen. He's like, I got it. I fucking got it, pal. <laughs> I said, man, y'all thought Sohan was running the break? Y'all wait till Shifty get in there. And he'll he'll make sure Vic get his you know eleven and eight you know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. uh, let him touch the ball a couple times. Oh no, yeah, let him let him rub the leather, let him caress the leather, so he feels involved in the game plan. Uh, and then it's time to get shifty. <laughs> well, what did I didn't look at the bracket yet? Well, how do you feel about Kentucky's draw? Did you guys get hosed? Has there been a hosing? Well, we haven't played yet. If we lose, we got hosed. Okay, all if right. If we win. Then the odds were stacked against us. How could we? How, this is the best 14 seed ever. How, they're in our bracket. Uh, no, we've had, it's people were saying like it's a stacked bracket. If I was Houston's the number one in our bracket, if I was Houston, I'd be pissed. Okay. Because Marquette's the two, Duke's the three, and Kentucky's the four. If I'm Houston, I'm like, what the fuck? Like we dominated <laughs> most of the year. UConn's number one overall, but we got to be close to get that. But on our side, we're the three of it, so we would have to see Marquette. If we get, we haven't been past the first weekend, and oh God, it's been a hundred years <laughs> now. So I can't look too too far ahead. But if we go out and handle our business, and I if you Dillingham play your game, a, I saw the quote. Oh my God! <laughs> I said I've heard that before. Every single March loss we ever had. If we just play our game, we don't even watch that game. Why? Yeah. What? what are you doing? Watch that film. They're watching yours. <laughs> we just watch our own film. We have, we, we have them Photoshop the opponents off the screen. It's just uh, us. It's this dilly is dilly out there getting I'm busy. Just, <laughs> this is going to be a telling march for Calipar. This is either his best work or his biggest troll. Because uh, Rob's saying all that stuff. That's Calipar. I've heard that in Cal's voice a hundred times. 
second, Cal was like, I might start playing two, three, six bigs at a time. <laughs> and it's like NBA analysts, they're like, dear God, John, you were so close to doing right. And you're about to go complete the other way. So I hope it's his biggest troll. One game at a time. Oakland first, and then we'll see. The the Detroit Oakland? Michigan Oakland, yeah. Ah, boy. I, I feel like they're first. I have no, no players on that team. No idea who the coach is. Not even 100% sure I can picture the uniforms in my head. They get to the tournament every once in a while. I feel like they can cause a problem or two. They have literally the most prolific three-point shooter in the country. What could possibly go wrong? Like he's Cal's number like, get one. Get it down yeah. low. Get it down low. No, he's going to be like, yo, leave him. What's he going to do? Make 10 threes in the first half? <laughs> Smith, nine for nine. And let's one fly. That That is how we lose. But if we play our game, we only watch our stuff, then we... Listen, we you can... The, the most prolific three-point shooter in the nation, statistically, might be on this Oakland team. The best three-point shooter in the country, for my money, is is uh, Tomonaga, the Japanese Steph Curry for Nebraska. This kid gets busy like no college play. But him and Dilly should just play a one-on-one tournament. I would watch that over the actual March Madness ten times out of ten. Just I just the want championship, to see, whoever wins is the, t- the team ball. champion. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Because this guy, I feel bad. I, I, just watching him, he looks like he plays at about 5'11", maybe 6 feet. If he were 6'3", six, 6'4", six, I think he's like a top 10 pick. Like, that's how easily he gets his shot. Have you watched him play? He's unbelievable. No. This is going to be, he's going to have like a, and I don't even say this is a not, like a 10-year career in the G League. Like a guy that's just steady sure. there and getting in and out. But, man, if you can, if you can shoot the tramp like that, you'll always get a look. Especially when I'm running the Spurs. <laughs> that would be sick. Him and him and Wemby picking picking pops. I don't Wemby can do whatever he wants. Pop and I, pop. There'll be no picks. I would just <laughs> pop and pop. He, he was walking through who were they even playing yesterday? Doesn't matter. Whoever they were playing yesterday. He he just so casually goes behind his back to lay it in. Like, it's like what are you doing, dude? Like can you make it they're gonna have to do some sort of Luau Cinder rules to the NBA because this Wemby stuff is going to get out of hand. I think it's already there, man. I think they missed their chance. They should have just banned him <laughs> before. <laughs> they should have just banned him. And Did they did. His, bro- his brother's like 6'9 now. It's like eight. <laughs> eight years old. It, and now the president has been said, you let, you let people like that. Into, and into this fine establishment we got. And look what happened to our lead. I don't know if you saw any of the Nets highlights. I can't stop thinking about it. I'm was that who they were playing yesterday? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. When he, he catches it on, like, the left wing, he's like, there's a lot of people in the way, but not an issue. And he just kind of, like, casually got, like, like, if the court were completely empty, that's the type mm-hmm. of effort it looked like he gave and just so quickly gets to the rim. No problem. See you later. His handle is also like for the, I feel like, like years in the playoffs, we saw Kevin Durant have to like get his handle tighter and tighter and tighter, or you just get ripped from being that tall. He doesn't seem to have that. Uh, he like an 87 already, speed with the ball, uh, driving, pass accuracy. He got the badges. He, he's got it all. Yeah, it's messed up. It's pretty messed up. But I need to hear uh, random, random aside number two. And I need it right now. <laughs> Your texts are blue again. Mm-hmm. What's this about? Uh, so, for the kids out there, there's this thing called marriage, where a man and a woman get together, and the woman makes all the decisions. Uh, and she let me have my little fun with an Android for six months. Really, the the breaking point, you just can't text pictures back and forth between no. Android and and like they not without it looking like capture. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't understand what's going on with the like. So every once in a while, I've tried texting over Wi-Fi. I've tried all of it. Every once in a while, one comes through pristine, 
but there's no rhyme or reason as to when they allow that to happen. It's not like, oh yeah, if you're both on Wi-Fi, if you're both on SMS, there's nothing. There's no fucking consistency to that. And that was driving, as, as people with small children who were constantly taking pictures of them, that was the end for me. I was like, I gotta go back. It's This is too much. Like, Baby girl looks good. She's growing. She's like, no, that's Coley. Uh, y'all can't really tell from the <laughs> the compression. <laughs> it's terrible. Business. Uh, but I like the Android. I, I like the, uh, the galaxy. I thought it was good. Um, but yeah, that, and I, again, I blame Apple for the inability to text between one. They know what they're doing. They well, absolutely know what they're doing. Why would they, yeah. Why would they give in? I mean, the EU courts have been bludgeoning Apple over the head. They made them change the charger <laughs> so that it had to be Android's charger. And they are, this is the annoying part. I know they're changing to get on to the universal text system, like green bubbles will be disappearing forever very soon. It's just not soon enough. So <laughs> it's like I was trying to hold out and be like, we're almost there. And, and I, I have no idea when that change is set to to hit, but it wasn't it wasn't fast enough for the Mick man. Uh, for the Mick ma'am, sound like that's a, <laughs> yeah. good on good on her. Good on you text me one day, it popped up from the computer. I said, That's that hasn't happened in a while. <laughs> Yeah, it was, uh, and Jared, like, Jared was furious. I couldn't FaceTime him. He refuses to call any other type of way. He was, he, he couldn't a, have. A drug dealer. He just doesn't <laughs> talk over the light. <laughs> yeah, he couldn't have it. So I'm back. It's also, again, I know I said this when I got the Android. The fact that you can no longer just walk into a store and leave with a phone is absurd. It's absurd. <laughs> More places sell them, and it's still harder to get a phone. Yeah, but you can also. And, but if you get one, you get it for like a penny. You can get the iPhone 14 for a literal penny if you go to Best Buy or something. Right. It's uh. So I did that. Probably that was definitely when we got back. So that must have been beginning of March, end of February. The other day. So up here, I've been on YouTube TV since I moved to Maine. To watch the Red Sox. Is they make it as difficult as possible. They have no contract with YouTube TV. I can't get like the MLB League Pass equivalent because it'll be blacked out in my area, which is awesome. And then to get it straight from Nesson, which is New England Sports Network, they that's the the channel the Red Sox own, it's thirty dollars a month. And for this dog shit ass team, I'm not paying thirty dollars a month for them to, con- to continue to be dog baseball dogs. season long too. <laughs> Long as hell. So I was like, <laughs> where can I go that offers both the Celtics, who bring me tremendous joy until about May, or the Red Sox, who it's something to watch. And so I'm like, I guess I'm going back to cable, which is also not, it's cable is also now streaming. Uh, like I don't nah, need a cable wire. Might be back. Yeah. I didn't need a wire. None of that. So I call. To just be like, hey, I, I would like to add this to my package. Like, I already get my internet from them. Like, just add TV. And this took 45 minutes. I was like, if I wanted to sign up for a streaming service, I'd click three buttons and it would be ready to go. Listen, I it, called... used to take three we- it used to take three weeks. It used to come out to your house and all that. <laughs> Listen, that was then. And that all of the services took three weeks back then. So it was even Steven. Now, right. when given the option between just <laughs> turning on YouTube TV and this fucking thing, I don't, I don't know if I sound poor in my voice, but she was like, let's find out what the cheapest option is. I was like, no one, I, I didn't ask for the cheapest <laughs> option. I just asked for these things. And someone, it uh, someone with your cadence could afford. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a slapped jaw here? Yeah, yeah. let's. <laughs> we have a uh, Bilbo Baggins package you may be interested in, <laughs> sir. I couldn't believe it. I mean, the package they were trying to get me on, as insulting as it was, did sound sick. You just got to pick 15 channels, none of the fluff, none of the nonsense. Okay. I picked the 15 channels. 
at the end of it, she goes to hit submit, and they're like, oh, you can only pick one of Nesson or NBC Sports Boston, which is, you can pick one of the Red Sox or the Celtics. I was like, this, the whole reason I called you is because I'm tired of picking just one. Like, that's, that's why I picked up the phone, you understand. And she was like, huh. And I was like, do you have other packages? She was like, I, if you can afford them, yeah, we can, we can talk. <laughs> if, if you're throwing money around, Dr. Dr. Fat Wallet, yeah, we can talk. These are over a saw book a month, you understand. Uh, someone with your vernacular may not be able to. Uh, <laughs> let's show you some of our low roller uh, yeah. prices. Yeah. Uh, this is for uh, people with a full mouth of chompers. And I can tell you hillbilly, you do not have that. So, yeah, we're, we'll keep you over here on the, the free package. You can, you can get the bunny ears up. She's like, you just give us this... Uh, Number next time you call in, you call it like, oh, yes, uh, big dumb dumb face. Yes, they told us to be expecting you. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. 45 minutes to insult me. Uh, and finally, I'm here. It, it's great. The TV, the channels still have numbers, even though there's no way to input numbers. Like none. <laughs> no way to do it. <laughs> nah, you just got to ask AI. Like, man, can you please ask Chat? GPT to turn it to channel 17 and it might yeah it's been good so far it's still spectrum who i've never trusted since living in new york and and they you have down there too right mm -hmm. yeah brutal i i'm just a man who wants some xfinity that's all i want in my life but they have not laid those wires in maine and they probably never will so I, this is what i'm stuck with now nah, you yeah pretty much so pick a side mm, i did i did i i again Thank you to the service for YouTube TV. The only other option to get both is Fubo, which I will not. <laughs> I'm not trusting Fubo today. Listen, I'm not trusting Fubo tomorrow. I think I did Fubo like last year, maybe during March Matt, like the free week trial only for that. It was slick, big, yeah, big Fubo hours for like a week. It was all right. It was all right. It was all right. The first time I saw Nesson was on Fubo. I was like, these this sentence isn't in the Bible. Uh, and also, I like it just doesn't seem like a name with any longevity to it. Like it doesn't seem like there's gonna be a Fubo in 2026. There might not be a anything in 2026. Also fair. So Fubo said we're here for a good time, not a long time. I know that's right. <laughs> I was after I deleted YouTube TV, my Apple TV was like, do you want to set PlayStation View is your. I was like, I haven't had PlayStation View since uh, 2017. I don't think you it's. You want to make Dreamcast your uh, number one? <laughs> I was like, this is. Don't, how many people are going to insult me today? What's going on <laughs> here? But yeah, the texts are blue. Uh, one thing I wanted to talk about, it's, it wasn't on the list, but it, it, it's looking like a, a holiday this upcoming Friday. Is it? Metro motherfucking booming in future, they're back. And I have reason to believe them this time. I was gonna say I've I've been spun this one before. If future were saying it, I I would be very cautious. Metro's like I've I've got it from here. Like I've, I've, I'm holding the files. Yeah. It's a double it's two drops on two different days though, right? Yeah. And the first one is Friday? Yes, sir. The 22nd, I believe. Double check the old calendar. Yeah, the 22nd. That's Frankie Beverly Day for Whiskers. So, I... <laughs> Frank Bev's on the farewell tour. So, I had to I had to get in there. How? What number farewell tour is this? I, they say it's the last one. And you can never be too sure. You don't want to uh, say you're going to see him and then miss him. But no, nah, he could man, he could run an encore twenty times I if he wanted hope to. Hope he does. He should. So that'll be. I'm. I was like, Kentucky don't piss me off Thursday, or if they do, it's gonna be Frankie Beverly. That won't piss me off. If there's no future, that would piss me off. If there's sure. future at all, it would not piss me off. Yeah, it, from from what I was reading earlier, he's basically running the the future Hendrix play again. Like rap album, R and B album, back to back. It's a good play. I don't know why more like people it. don't run it. They can't. They don't run it because they can't. <laughs> it's true. 
It's a good point. Yeah, people. Why doesn't anyone stop that Jokic to Aaron Gordon lob? <laughs> yeah, well, Murray's right there. Just go, just guard him. Do we know which one's coming? I, I don't even care which coming first. I don't even I care. Think the, Whatever. I think the rap's coming first. Listen, he used to drop two, and they say he would drop the bad, then the good. So I don't whatever again, whichever way he want to drop it. I'm I, saw, I don't know how true it is because there's a hundred anniversaries of a hundred things these days. Sure. So now it's like it's been four thousand seven hundred fifty six nights since Future dropped the tape, and I'm like, it feels that way in my mind and body. I don't know if that's actually true, but it feels that way to me. Was the last one he was the last one he dropped with the 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 tape with Uzi? Uh, the last one I remember uh, was I Never Liked You. I don't oh, know that was. yeah, that I just, to that's a, I don't know. When, yeah, that's the last one I remember, but I don't... That was 2022? One? I Never Liked You. Yeah, 22. Uh, 22. 22, okay. Not that far. April? Hey, April, though. It was early as 2020. Yeah. It was first quarter. But we're, we're back. I'm ready. Back like we never left. I hope it doesn't stink. I just can't imagine it, especially you listen to Metro's last album, the superheroes. Uh, was it the Spider Man? Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I, no, I, no, I guess uh, he, he did do the Spider Man soundtrack. Fair, but his own album. And I heard parts of that. I heard the full Spider Man, but parts of the uh, heroes and villains. Whatever. Yeah, I mean, some of them. I run the intro into superhero. Like I can only I can only play both together about twenty times in a row. Like it's it's unbelievable. The rest of the album's solid. It's not bad by any means. Um, some of the features, I'm always just like, "What are you doing here? <laughs> why why That's is Chris Brown at the end um, of this? He on the end of every song. <laughs> Ever like not even just Metro. Chris Brown has got a feature on every single song." Yeah, I don't need it. I've never needed it. Do we have a track list or no? I don't think there's a track list. Let me go to Mr. Bowman's page. I mean, I do. He's he's trustworthy in general. So if he's the one posting, but I, I've I've been hurt before. So I just need to, I need to see it load in my my Apple Music before I can believe it. Yeah, no. I mean, he just keeps tweeting. It's coming. Friday, no track. Me think if he protested too much, man, <laughs> I'm getting worried. Well, he for for about the last year or so, he just keeps saying like I'm in the studio with Future, and then everyone's like, enough, Metro, just drop it. I don't care if it's mixed. I don't care if it's mastered. Just drop it. Um, and so then it it makes sense. He's been talking. They've been working. That he has two albums full of full of material. If they've been working as much as he says they have. I need I, just, I need to hear. I would like to hear it. Oh, yeah, I'll be the judge of that for sure. I'm sure. Yeah, I would like uh, to hear it. It'll be good. Uh, what What do you have as number three on this? Um, they, I, these were going to be more spread out once you said there were five. Now we got to yeah, get into I have it. a few additions. Uh, number three. Is it kind of draft related? Kind of not. Should the Chiefs backup quarterback just only be an elite quarterback sneaker? And that's it. Like they're aggressive. They go for it. They don't really quarterback sneak though. Because Mahomes hurt his knee on it a couple years ago. I know they have Kelsey do it sometimes. But should that – it's like this is all you do, buddy. Like if Mahomes is out, we're cooked. But we're leaving potential. Even if it's like one or two first downs over an extra couple of games, if we're leaving that on the field because we know we're not even going to try that, should that just be your specialty? I, I even think back to the Super Bowl. It was fourth down, and they just rolled Mahomes out because then mm. it's like all right you can come and try and tackle me i'm just going to throw it to someone obviously wide open or i'm just going to pick it up with my legs which he did do but they also do still have the bell dozer blake bell who was a quarterback at oklahoma is like their force they have a, a, an absurd amount of tight ends on this roster <laughs> so that's where it's like yeah like you said kelsey does it sometimes i don't hate just having uh, large quarterbacks uh, from college that have been converted to tight ends that can do it. You know what I mean? They keep Mahomes mm -hmm. on the field, just motion a tight end under center and take it from there. And Logan it's Thomas Reed. hours. Yeah, Logan Thomas, who rest in peace, according to the Washington. Did you see that post? No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> He's not dead, Dwight. Yeah, they <laughs> had him in the sky with the clouds and everything. Thank you, uh, you beautiful man. So I put man. wings on him, man. It's unbelievable. But yeah, just an absurdly large college quarterback. It doesn't really matter if he ever becomes a good tight end, but just having him on the field. Yeah. yeah, having him on the field in those situations, I think, is the play. But I don't. I do agree with your overall point. Their their backup is never going to be Mahomes, so it should be like a crazy athlete in some regard. Yeah, like if he's out as quarterback, we're cooked. So let's get some type of value, something like fourth down, like fourth and one, fourth and inches. That might come like multiple times a game. That's sure. your backup quarterback giving you some type of value. And then in the playoffs, like you said, yeah, roll him out, let him use his legs. But over the course of seventeen. We need a quarterback sneak, bring in whoever. Yeah, Tua's sure little they, brother. He's been in college a long time. It might be time for him. I'm sure they don't want to do the multiple road games thing again if they're going to try and keep stacking rings, which I assume they are. So that's where it makes sense. Like, yeah, let's try and manufacture these regular season wins however we can. Yeah, like through that and... Outside that, they, that was really my only note for the Chiefs. They seem to have things. <laughs> I was on the consulting firm. I said, man, I would sign Chris Jones. That guy's amazing. And they did that. They did just that. Sneed, I would keep Sneed. I don't know what the, what's the update with him. Last I saw, he was traded to the Colts and then very untraded to the Colts. So I don't know what happened on that front, but he is not on the Colts. I, they listened to the consulting. He would not leave the Chiefs if I was – Consulting personally, I trade that for Snead, no problem. I, uh, him with Gonzalez in the secondary, I, everyone keeps focus, and I'm so you tired. You trade which of pick it. for Snead? Uh, the or same package that was rumored for him with the Colts. I think it was like a four this year and a two next year, something along those lines. I'd do that if I was 31 other teams so in the fast. league. Honestly, so fast. I have no idea what. Uh, trade value is even with pick swaps and all that now conditional man forget it well it's it's been an interesting off season for about 31 teams not the patriots <laughs> and the cowboys <laughs> even that since i'm not a cowboys fan i find interesting because i get to laugh at them um and most fan bases do hate the cowboys and to be fair they hate the patriots too so i get other people loving this but it's just it's been brutal, and, and it, I had been fine up until the Fields trade, seeing how he got traded for nothing, and the amount of people, like, he's worse than Mac. Why would we ever do this? Like, what reality do people live in? Then I get people being like, you've clearly never watched him. Obviously, I've fucking watched him. No one listens to me when I talk about it. Why people have lined up to be like, Oh, it wasn't Mac's fault. He had three different offensive coordinators. He had a coach on the way out. He had no receivers. And then they're just like, Fields was just always bad, obviously. It's like, what are you talking about? What is, what is the logic there? I think the part I hate most about the Fields is like, well, you can't give up stuff. Which I mean, going into before the trade, nobody knew what it was going to take. But it was like, and then you have to decide on the fifth-year option. It's like, you can say no, though. Like, if you say no, you can, he can still stay with the team. Like, you don't have to pick it up and he stay forever. There's, It's not black or white. And it's like, well, now the Steelers have to pick up the option. No, they don't. No, they and don't. The, they'd be very stupid to pick up the option at this point unless they. he just has the best training camp you have ever seen right. in your life. Like, my thing, I, I said there wasn't 32 better. Like, however you feel about Fields, and there are people who think he's, like, same caliber as Mac Jones. Like, can he pick it? I, I think he's better than those guys. But if you want to argue that the difference is not that much, okay. Sam Darnold just got like $9 million. Trubisky got another job. His, my, the thing with Darnold is he had like he looked pretty good with the Panthers what, two seasons ago mm -hmm. toward the end of the year. He threw, I think, 45 passes last year in San Francisco. And I've seen enough people say, okay, if he's figured it out. If you really think he's figured it out, why are you giving him a one-year deal? Sure. Because there's no upside to that. He could ball out, and then you got to pay him. A, like, Baker had one good year and got a, like, I don't think a deserved deal. We got $100 million. Right. If you really think Darnold's that guy, why are you not trying to get two for, is he going to say no to two for 16? If you really, like, if you feel that way about him. Big Shoe got two years even. <laughs> Jacoby was... got $8 million. I would have did all these things before giving Sam Darnold $9 million, respectfully. I... 
as you're saying it, yeah, I would have given Jacoby multiple years too. Obviously, the Patriots are locked in at a quarterback at number three, which I was I was going back looking at the last couple of drafts for because it, it happens every year. It's like we just have no short term or no long term term memory about what happens to these quarterbacks. The 2021 draft, Trevor Lawrence, generational. Uh, he's still there in Jacksonville. Seems like it's going okay, even if this year was very up and down. Zach Wilson, sure. Trey Lance, Trey, the first of these guys traded. Went for a fourth uh, rounder, but Justin Fields. Okay, man. <laughs> Justin Fields traded for a, a, a pick. This is where it's like a, a lot of Bears fans are loving what Poles is doing right now. It's hard for me to sit here and be like, that was the best deal he could get. Four fields tying it to playing time is absurd. Like, all right, you just trade him for a six. Then why even? What's with all the formalities? You trade trade him for a six. Like they're gonna not play unless Russ gets hurt and can't play, which is a thing that doesn't really happen to Russell Wilson. It's it's a six. What the only thing I could see is if we're halfway through the season and Russ just hasn't looked good, and he's just they know he's not really he could be very healthy, but. He's just not the option. At that point, you might want to see if Fields is worth keeping for 2025 and on. I don't know what the snap, you know, how many snaps he would have right. to get for it to convert or whatever. But I guess the word is now is that Poles had other other better offers to teams that had, like, established starters. And he said he wanted to do right by Fields. I've seen people that believe that. I've seen people that don't believe that. So it's <laughs> yeah. on the side of – I don't think he – I don't think he had a first rounder in hand and was like, no, I have to do right by Justin Fields. It was probably like somebody else would give you a, like a fourth, definitely. And he was like a sixth conditional fourth. He wanted to do right by him maybe. I could see that, but I don't think he – he didn't turn down the, the Carolina Panthers. No. Or, no. Think. And that's – even going back to when we were at the Super Bowl, people were like, would you trade a two for Fields? Obviously, he was never going to fetch a two. Even with – you just remove how you feel about him as a player – you know if the Bears are trading him, they're taking a quarterback at one. They never had any leverage to get anything, no matter how anyone felt about but field. the Cardinals did that for Rosen, though. I was Somebody went back and looked at it. At, after the Cardinals had already drafted Kyle, they still got a second-round pick. Yeah, that was dumb. For Josh Rosen. <laughs> yeah, you, you just got to find you a dummy. So no, if you're saying, sure. like, there's some precedent, but, yeah. There's precedent, but... That's that's me saying that without bringing in how teams feel about Fields. You also know your how teams feel about Fields, right? And black quarterbacks in general, like there were only ever going to be three, four teams that were going to be in on Fields. We saw that when he was drafted. People were like, "Oh, you can't take this guy second or third for the reasons that never really made sense." And even as I see people talk about him now, I feel like people just ignore all the success. Jared Goff has had with both Detroit now and when he took the Rams to the Super Bowl. If I hear one more person say like, "Oh, Fields just makes his one read and then runs," okay, scheme around that. <laughs> what are you talking about? It's worked for Goff many times now. Like the Rams keep doing it. Obviously, with a better version with Stafford, a guy who can get to that third read if he needs to. Not every quarterback can. Why? Why make him do things if you think he's bad at them? Okay, eliminate it from the playbook. If the first read's not there, take off. Use your absurd athletic ability and go. Simple. I guess the disconnect for me has been like we – okay, we've seen there are not 32 good quarterbacks. If you watch the NFL, you could agree on that. I think the highs of – like even acknowledging that he holds the ball too long, he takes too many sacks, he's inaccurate, ABC, whatever. The highs of that is like, okay, there might be something there. Something in turn, not even saying like he wins MVP one day, but sure. if I think this is, is maybe a starting, a top 32 level, y'all yeah, roll the dice. I felt the same way about Sam Howe. Sam Howe take too many sacks, throw too many interceptions. But if you tell me the price for him is moving up like on like a day three right? to get him for two dirt cheap years, yeah, I roll the dice. Because I might, I'd do that if I was the Vikings instead too. I know he's going to sling it. Like we didn't okay. see any of these highs from with like Zach Wilson or Mac right. Jones or any, yeah, we didn't see these highs. That's why it's like, he just gets written off with the, like the lows are low, the highs are high, but it's just like, he stinks. The lows are the lows. He'll never overcome them. Maybe he won't, but I'm willing to, until we know for a fact, there are 32 better options. I'm willing to see. 
And if let he stinks, me, he stinks. We gave up nothing. Let me see him outside of the Bears, who outside of Jay Cutler haven't had anyone that even resembled a competent quarterback since the 80s. You know what I mean? Like, RG3 has been getting killed for two days. And I do not like to agree with RG3 when he says <laughs> like, Careful. I want that on the record. I'm not quick to agree with him. And I don't agree with his overall point that Caleb should demand a trade and all this. Like, that's insane. But he did say the head coach's job is on the line this year if they don't make the playoffs. I think that's for sure on the table. I think Poles has more leeway. I don't think Poles is gone. I think most people are pretty happy with what Poles has been doing. And it's hard to argue, uh, given what the return they got for Bryce Young after a year where they're sitting right now, they should feel pretty good. They got Keenan Allen for free. They got DJ Moore as a throw into the trade. Like they right now should have been Burns. (laughs) We'll get to that. (laughs) Um, But right now they, they look like they're in a pretty good spot overall. He did trade a two for Chase Claypool. That was an insane move. Uh, he, he traded the two for Montez Sweat. I think that was a sane move, especially since he got him re-signed immediately. So I think overall he's done a good job. I don't know that he got top value for Fields, but like he's spun quickly after that. Like, no, he wanted to be a stealer. Maybe he did. Maybe he did do right by him. I I know you can't say we'll that. We'll never know that part. So, yeah, you yeah, right. can't come out and say, no, don't even get mad at me. But right. Don't I send post- us your best offers because we're going to be good to him. Part of the other reason I was in on the Patriots trading for Fields, other than the things you said, like I do believe in and what he can be outside of Chicago. Trading number three, especially with what you've seen the Vikings do to prepare to trade up. If everyone agrees we have all these holes, which we do, how is trading back from three? And while still addressing a quarterback issue, not the better idea. Like that's obviously the better plan here. Comfortably, so, the better. So player. Minnesota now has what eleven? Twenty-three. Twenty-three. Justin Jefferson. Would, no, <laughs> they do have him. Uh, <laughs> that's that's the side I can never get. Like I see that. Hey man, they should just blow it all the way up and move. I was like, I see what you're saying. I'm not trading Justin Jefferson until he add, like I'm sure not going to do it personally. Even before I pay him, I'm not going to do it. Uh, no, it does. Yeah, seem like they're coming. I guess the thing is. You'd have to think Fields is not the worst quarterback ever, which very few think. Or if you like one of the quarterbacks next year, and I've already seen some hesitation on the the name, like Beck, Shador, Ewers, um, somebody unknown will pop in. There's a few more names, I'm sure. Buddy from Penn State, uh, Alaire from Penn State. Oh, yeah. So it's – I get waiting – if you really like Fields or if you want one of those guys or if you're willing to not get a quarterback for two years, which might be the right choice. I just don't know if – does that fan, I mean, does any fan base now have the appetite for – It's – to it? me, it's not even who's this unknown because that, that goes back to 2020. Like the 2022 draft, all of those quarterbacks are bad or not on the team they started with. Pickett, traded. Desmond Ritter, traded. Malik Willis – has looked really bad when he's gotten to play. Matt Corral, I still don't know what happened Matt Corral. He's in the USFL. Bailey Zappi, the only person where <laughs> to be where he started, and he, even he's been cut. Um, and then Sam Howell traded to Seattle. You go back, so the last two draft for quarterbacks, it's literally just Trevor Lawrence and Bailey Zappi. They're the only two who have been able to withstand and stay with the teams that they started with. You go back to 2020 now, that's the draft where you can point to and argue whatever side of this you'd like. You can argue this is why you take a quarterback. This is You can argue why you wait a year. Because in 2019, wasn't a single person talking about Joe Burrow. Tank for Tua was what? Dolphins fans? Cincinnati fans? All those bad teams were talking about heading into that next year. And then all of a sudden, Joe Burrow about... Three quarters of the way through his year at LSU, everyone's like, maybe this guy's the number one overall pick. He goes one, Tua goes five, and Herbert goes six, or four and five, five and six. I think that's right, five, six. And so when you look at those guys, it's like, okay. But then you look at the end of the first round, who's there? Jordan Love, who like he only has one year of tape. Looks like pretty good tape, as far as I'm concerned. You go to the second round, you see Jalen Hurts. 
pretty damn good quarterback draft. And also, if you look at the rest of that top 10, the safe picks, it's like Jeff Akuda. Not great. Um, oh. I think Andrew Thomas was good. The first two wide receivers taken in that draft, for all the people who just like, like, oh, just take the receiver. They always work out. Henry Ruggs, Jerry Judy. Like, that's that's how it works. And then it goes to C.D. Lamb. And then there's a, another guy. His name's Jalen Rager. Before it gets to Jeff, Justin Jefferson. But there are elite guys. But I love the 2020 draft because you can truly argue it however you want. Yeah, just take the quarterback. Obviously, all three of those teams, Herbert, Tua, um, Burrow, they're all pretty happy with the situation to varying degrees. Pretty happy with the situation they're at. Just wait. You can be like the Eagles. Just wait. You can be like the Packers. Like there, you could really argue it however you want. That's the beauty of this. It sure is, and I, that's, the, that's why I argue now. You should never take one. <laughs> I would never take a. If I was, if I was uh, Chicago right now, man, I would. I trade the pick too. They say you traded Fields and Caleb. I said, <laughs> man, I'm, I'm thinking. I, I'm I'm going Bajan. I'm going tight. I'm stacking the rest of the roster. Well, I, that's and bait. no. <laughs> that's the other argument. If you stack the rest of the roster, now you become that much more appealing. You never know who's going to demand a trade for already guys who are in the league. You don't know what Detroit's going to do with Goff, if that's someone you you rate as highly, if, if he's going to become available next year, and you already have the rest of the covered stock. You just never know. You never know who's going to be like, you know what, Dak, you're out of here in, in Dallas, and he hits free agency. You never know when shit like that's going to happen. Even last year, people were low, very low on C.J. Stroud. He was QB, too. And now it makes me wonder, like, why should Chicago have just taken him? Would that have been – and they could have got more for Fields last year. It wouldn't have been the same as the package from Carolina, obviously. But they might have just been able to swap him for D.J. Moore straight up. I think it goes into – like, as prospects, Caleb would have definitely been higher, but with a year of what we've seen. This is me. I I, Yeah. Definitely could see either side of that. Uh, I was going to say, I had a good point too, man. <laughs> oh, yeah, I've got it. It's not a good of a point, but I dare remember. <laughs> this is, this a point is nevertheless. Why, this is why, I mean, they've been getting some flack for, they, they should be getting flack for some things, but the Falcons just getting Kirk Cousins for only cash. It's like these guys are just not, a, there's not that many of them. Right. They're not available, and they're not available for only cash. Only cash, usually. So with the Achilles, with the, I know he's 36, whatever. But it's like, if we can just sign one of these guys who's when he's healthy is a top. Put whatever number you, it ain't, I'm trying to be concerned. It's not 12 quarterbacks better than Kirk Cousins right now. Think conservatively. Sure, yeah. Yeah, it's around 12 to Ish. Yeah. So if that guy, the last year or two of deals, I, have never mattered anyway. So if you can get that guy for only cash, the thing I disagree, I've seen people for the Falcons say, or some Falcons fans say they should still draft a quarterback like round two. And I'm like, listen, you're in the Kirk cousins bed. The divisions winnable. I think you have to decide what's your goal. If you're trying to win like the division and compete for that while Kirk cousins is here, I think you go receiver. I'd go receiver round two if I was the Falcons and probably Dallas uh, Turner. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because the line's set in Atlanta. The offensive line's set. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't hate that as the edge. And I've liked what they've done. They have they went out and they got um, Darnell Mooney. So they've already attacked receiver a little bit, but I, I don't disagree getting another one. Get as many as you can. <laughs> right, Mooney uh, turning Ritter into Rondell Moore, I think was a win, even, for, even for all Rondell Moore's uh, flaws. Getting that, I'd get a rec- I just keep hearing how deep a receiver draft is. And I've heard, like, there are Falcons fans who want, you know, like, Odunzi or Neighbors if he's there at eight. And I get it. Like, really get your offense straight. But one, I think Dallas Turner might be one of those, like, those guys, which I think you should just take. And if four quarterbacks go in the first top whatever, you're going to get, like, maybe the best player in the draft at six, seven, 13. 12. Aaron Donald just retired, the 12th pick. <laughs> In his draft, the best defensive player I've ever seen on a day-to-day basis, on a week-to-week basis. And he went 12. He's tiny. Little bitty. Yeah, salute Aaron Donald. Unbelievable career. Uh, kind of shock, Kind of the most shocking news of the offseason so far was him just, yeah, I'm done. And that was floated after he won. Yeah. 
Uh, so it's it, but once like a couple of years pass, you're like, ah, oh, he was just kidding, and then he just up and leaves. I'm I'm glad he gets to like leave healthy, you know, or as mm. healthy as he can be. Um, and now he just gets to chill, which is um, and he's until he files that paperwork. I I like if the Rams are making a run, he might be someone who just wants to play the second half of the seasons. Now I don't know that we've seen the last of Aaron Donald. That's one of those. If I'm the, I hold on to his rice forever, just in case. If 38 year old Aaron Donald wants to come in, like, you remember when uh, Terrell Suggs was a Kansas City Chief? He just played like, like just the postseason though. It's like, hey man, just just get after it for 30 snaps a game. Can do. Yeah, Brian Burns. The Panthers couldn't have fumbled that more. And I was someone who argued for them keeping him because I thought they were going to do the thing where they just extend him and pay him a lot of money. If I knew they had no intention you of really... D- you idiot. Yeah. If I knew that was never in the cards, yeah, of course you trade him for two first-round picks, not uh, the sludge they got back in return for him. <laughs> nah, that was one at the time. I was like, yeah, I don't think y'all are as close as y'all think. Brian Burns would have been a Los Angeles Ram <laughs> if I was in charge, not hindsight. And that, it's tough because like, what they got for him is definitely not what they could have, but it does seem like they kind of have a plan. The Panthers on the whole, like they paid a lot of money for guards, which very necessary for offensive yeah. line. Very ne- like to let Bryce to let Bryce do anything in the pocket. I really like getting Deontay Johnson for like a seventh and six swap. Yeah. That's a, however you feel about him for a seventh and six swap. That's worth the risk. They've got what two? I think two top forty picks right now, to where they could definitely. I've heard like McConkey's name mentioned. I feel like receive yeah. you have to get receiver with at least one of those guys, yeah. if not both, and then maybe one other free agent guy. And it's like, okay, there's somewhat of a plan here, even if the Burns things was botched, even if like the whole Bryce we don't need to go back through that. Like moving forward, there seems like there is a plan. We'll see how long they keep it, the plan, or what they even they get neither no receiver with either of these picks, and it's just like Thielen's number one again, but. I didn't hate those. I think those. You know what I did I, hate? Oh, go ahead. Now, just real quick. I hated the Raiders paying Jimmy Garoppolo $23 million to play seven games. They'll take a $17 million cap hit for signing him. He played seven games. Again, even seven, you can't even say, man, in those seven games, he was an MVP candidate. They were seven <laughs> and oh. They, they beat the Chiefs twice. It was seven games. That Jimmy, what did you think he was going to get? Yeah. That's what I'm trying to avoid. But they got it. it. No, they got it. Um, who was I just on? God damn it. Who was I just looking at that made me have that thought? There was a player here. No, I scrolled. Oh, Bryce Huff. Most money ever mm. for an undrafted player that also wasn't a quarterback. Uh, Philly just kind of reloads and, and gets after it. They're, I think they're primed to have a, maybe a hot take. I know it's what we do here. Right. I think, I think yeah. the Eagles are going to be pretty good next year. <laughs> I did appreciate the whole, like, even last year, it was like, listen, the Eagles are just never going to spend capital on a running back. Not Bijan, not anybody. And then how he wrote, he said, Saquon Barkley's available? Uh, I have a couple dollars Scroll available. Away. And I, it's even me, I didn't hate it. My Just the whole running back thing, the only move I, re- like, hated or didn't get was the Texans. That's the one I didn't get, the Joe Mixon. Sure. Well, like, trade him for him, I get it, because he was... But they gave him a new deal. I didn't know that part. Yeah, that He got more... Gu- yeah, yeah I, I didn't... For, but, <laughs> he got more guaranteed money than Josh Jacobs, Pollard, Derrick Henry, Eckler, Singletary, and Aaron Jones. And it's like, I... I think I'd rather have, like, maybe all those guys. If I'm... If, like, if I have to give out a new deal... Sure. ...to one of these guys... But I was like, is mix it like is he just a really good like pass blocker or something? It feels like a reason they targeted him. Like they didn't want him to get to free agency. The Bengals right. were gonna cut him. They right. traded for a reason. Like, we want this guy. Gave him money immediately. So I'm like, is he I know he can catch. Maybe he's really good in pass protection, better than those other guys, but I don't know. I would've I might would have went with Jacobs or some since everybody essentially got one year deals anyway, no matter what the money is. Right. Yeah, I I liked Jacobs going to Green Bay. Because you talk about a team that never spends money on people that are aren't already inside the building. For that being like one of the first moves any team made, I was like, oh, okay. And then they brought back your boy. I was like, that's more confusing, but okay. 
I, the Packers fans love him more than even I. All the Packers fans love the A.J. Dillon re-signing. <laughs> I also found out uh, the Giants signed Jermaine Illuminor, uh, former Patriot, uh, swing tackle. He was he was like the sixth lineman. And I saw he was doing it like the, the selfie video, like, welcome, Big Blue, I can't wait to play. And I clicked on his profile, blocked! Blocked by Jermaine oh, no. Illuminor. I said, what? What did I even do? Now, you used to be on his head pretty tough. We can call it even now. Possibly. I don't know that I've ever said anything about <laughs> What do you think it was? What do you think the final straw? He said, this is enough, man. I'm going to see if I've ever even tweeted his name. Not that the search function even works on this godforsaken hellhole anymore, but I couldn't believe it. when I Illuminor and bio. What did you, or maybe he, he was like, man, why this guy not tweeting at me? He not tweeting nothing about me. Yeah, I'm not, I didn't spell his name right correctly. I thought it was an A, not a U. Well, I, I would have blocked your ass too, disrespectful. Okay, so in, I have exactly one tweet about Jermaine <laughs> Illuminor. I said, Illuminor? More like Illuminate. They're lighting his ass up out there. So oh, I yeah, yeah. oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> Buddy, you would have been so gone. And this is against the Rams. (laughs) This is against the Rams. So it's Aaron Donald just eating his poor lunch. He gets to his locker. He says, I can't, the Mick man, I can't do this. No. No, that's fair too. Because I feel that way. I was thinking about just watching Aaron Donald highlight. I was like, man, this guy, just 10 minutes. I was like, that was an awesome play. Oh, uh, awesome. Oh, oh, awesome play. (laughs) And they keep showing like how many sacks he has, co- like compared to everybody else. And I'm like, I, I, I feel like y'all framing this wrong. He's getting sacks from position where you're not supposed. Like this is what makes right. Jokic special. He's right. getting ten assists at a position you're not supposed to get him at. <laughs> right. Like an edge rusher getting fifteen. Like it's impressive. It's great. Those guys definitely Hall of Famers. And all, and all day coming up, Mick, a defensive ta- four sacks. You are supposed to plug the plug your gap, oh, stop he- the run. Weigh three hundred eighty-seven pounds. <laughs> that was your that was your job as a defensive tackle. And you got the sacks because, like, you were holding the center perfectly still, and then <laughs> the quarterback got flushed to the front of the line by the edges, and you were just happened to be there. You weren't. You just shake the center that way a little. <laughs> yeah, bit. yeah. This is yeah. Th- we had never seen anything like an Aaron Donald, and we really haven't seen one since either. Like he was a true one of one. He's horrifying. I saw like over the last five years, his pass rush uh, win rate against double teams is better than the average <laughs> rusher against a single team. <laughs> and I saw he was first in uh, through his ten year through his first ten years. He's first in sacks, pressures, tackles for losses, quarterback hits, and pressures in under two point five seconds. Again, that not for defensive tackles, for everybody. Yeah. And it's like, man, you, I don't know. You're just not supposed to do that. Like Miles Garrett getting 18. I mean, Miles Garrett moves around to be fair. He's not strictly an edge guy, but a guy getting 18 sacks that way versus Donald just pressure up on your center immediately all game for a decade. It's just different. Like legit thankful. I got to watch like uh, pretty much his entire, the entirety of his career. And calling his shot to, Walk off a Super Bowl too is one of the coldest things I've ever seen. Look, they say McVay the genius. McVay a whole genius. He said, "Look, what? Look, look, look." Aaron Donald's gonna, Aaron Donald's gonna win this game. And what did he do? What did Aaron, what did little Aaron Donald do? Ninety nine is Urban Meyer called him. Who's a uh, <laughs> who's this guy? Absolutely eating our lunch all game. Do you guys know about this? Who's short stuff over there? What's his angle? What's he? Who's Pee Wee? What's that whole four and a half tackles for losses, two sacks in the first in the first half business, man? I don't I don't see him on my notes. <laughs> no one thought to tell me about this guy all week. All week we've been talking about the Rams. Nobody, no one brought up his name to me. Interesting, interesting. A lot of snakes he's like, in I've this been room. I've been watching Dante Fowler tape. Y'all told me 56 was the guy. Whole time, it's 9-9. Aha. Nine, nine. Uh-huh. Aha. Uh-huh. <laughs> Do we have any adjustments for the second half? No, I, th- 
I think he just had a hot hand. I think that'll cool itself I'll, out. Uh, <laughs> I think he's all tuckered out. I think him throwing our, him picking up our center and hitting the rest of our offensive linemen with him like a xylophone has tired him out, has tuckered the old boy out. As you look at the top of the draft right now, how would you rank? I was going to say those three quarterbacks, but I know you're a big McCarthy guy. So what? Yes. who are your top three quarterbacks right now? I, I mean, I go winners only. So it's J.J. McCarthy. Uh, mm-hmm. One, two, and, and three. That's, yeah. yeah, Devin Leary, number two. No. <laughs> this is probably – I've conceded. It's like, hey, I cannot evaluate a quarterback. Nobody can, but I can recognize this about myself. Mm. If they say Caleb, that guy, fine with it. My only, I guess, even doubt was when, like, I've seen, like, reputable names saying that they had, it's like they love Caleb, but they have Drake May, number one, Caleb, number two, which, okay. I just thought the whole point of Caleb, they were like, he's little Mahomes. I didn't think yeah. anybody would move past that, but maybe Drake May is good. I have no idea. Like, Jaden, you talk about a guy that came out of nowhere. I'll never forget when Jaden Daniels transferred out of Arizona State. His teammates were in the, like, throwing his shit away in the lot. Like, he was tra- like, trash ass. T- couple years. Little Heisman. Little 4,000, 1,000, <laughs> 40, whatever touchdown season. About to be a top five conservatively pick in the draft later. Maybe he st- – what did they know? What did they know? So, I, I – I'm fine with it, Caleb, Drake, Jaden. The hits, the hits, Jaden Daniel Tate really worried me. That really, worries, that really worries me. He is cartoonish uh, the way he takes hits. He's got, I don't know if it's his helmet or if his head's really that big, but he's a slender fella, so his head looks larger uh, on the. He's frame growing side. into it. <laughs> yeah, like Sheldon Williams. Yeah, he's growing into that. <laughs> That bulbous dome up there. <laughs> um, the hits are a concern for like I've I've never seen someone with both feet off the ground as often as I've seen Jaden Daniels. I've been seeing the heels like <laughs> the sole, like the bottom, whole bottom of his shoe, a whole lot more than I'd like to for my franchise quarterback. I can't remember who they were playing, but he was like, I'm going to hurdle. And like five people <laughs> caught him and just walked him back. Seven, the refs were like, I, they're not slamming him through with the cur- the earth's crust for some reason, so we're not going to blow our whistles yet. Um, yeah, those hits concern me as as the team that looks sl- uh, like they're about to take him third. I don't like what the media is doing. They're getting a lot of Patriots fans' hopes up uh, that Drake May is going to fall. Drake May is going to 1,000%. It seems like it, right? Yeah, yeah, it's Caleb Drake, and that's how it's been for about a calendar year now. I don't know what would change that. And Jaden, listen, the, the upside is tremendous. I'm not out on Jaden Daniels by any stretch. The hits are a concern. Every once in a while, he will throw a bounce pass because I think he thinks that's allowed. Not allowed. Can't do that. <laughs> uh, so there, there are flags for certain. Big flags. It's just, a, I, I guess it's still my, my old scout mind. I came up with Mike Lombardi mm-hmm, mm-hmm. back in the days cutting our teeth. Where, like, Parcells always is like, hey, man, you got to have, like, four and a half years of good tape, of good college tape. You got to start 87 game, win 71 of them, and that's just how it goes. So, for the guys that have had, like, one year, I'm still a little hesitant, but there have been definitely guys who have done, like, that's that's a me being slow to catch up. So, if Jane Daniels is just the newest or the latest guy to do that, I feel like the things I've heard is, like, Drake is the guy if you want to play in structure. Caleb's the guy that plays best out of structure. And Jalen Daniel, Jalen Daniels kind of makes some of the structured unstructured. <laughs> so I guess it's, it's whatever your preference is. Me, I, I'm i sorry. I just trade down. I'd sign the shoe, trade for Fields, and trade for Howell and profit. <laughs> yeah, let him figure it out. Yeah, yeah profit. And the way you feel about Turner is how I feel about Jared Verse. Jared Verse out of Florida State is just mm, Florida a State, monster yep. off the end. They say he's got these little bitty arms. Ah, that's not how I. That's when I look at my scouting profile. I see a guy who's constantly in the backfield. They were playing somebody who was either last year or two years ago, where he was just like dominating the right tackle so thoroughly. He was 
like you could hear him apologizing. Like he was just like, "Look, man, I, I don't know what to tell you." Like, I, isn't that personal? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I'm of the camp right now, and I, I know this isn't going to happen. So there's no point. Trade with Minnesota, take eleven and twenty three. If they want to take uh, the Penix or Penix with one of those picks, I'm fine with that. Like if they want to take a quarterback in this draft, I have no problem with that. I feel like they can maximize, like if you have three top 34 picks versus two, you can just hit two extra positions there. It just seems like the, the no doubt decision that we're not going to do. I'll say, unless you, that's how you feel. Like if you love Daniels, you just take him, no questions asked. Sure. If you don't or have, if they're willing to give, you know, Mayo some string, which I would hope they are just as a new coach. Then be like, yeah, we don't necessarily have to. It's nice to get your CJ Stroud, D'Amico Ryan's year one, just <laughs> be done with it. But you, you don't. I don't. You don't want to chase that with a guy you're not attached to, especially if, like, if Minnesota's like we are, like we're ending up in the top five. Like right. we are willing, we'll pay 120 cents on the dollar. You don't want to look that away for no. a guy. No, I would. I would take that trade. I I'm high on Jacoby too. And obviously high relative to prospects. I know what his ceiling is, but right. so far just getting rid of Mac and Devonte Parker, the offense is already better. Upgrade. Right? It's just much better already. It's, it is what it is. That's a better offense. Like that's the, if you don't have one of these guys, then yeah, you should be taking multiple swings at it. I won't say as often as possible. Like you do have to give a guy to me on a five-year contract you give them three or four by four you know on that option big time or not yeah and then try it again that's why in the meantime it's like yeah let russell wilson and justin fields fight it out Minshew and like i don't know what the raiders are gonna do i can't imagine it's Minshew and ocon like i wouldn't be surprised if they still draft somebody i don't know about oh, first round but big bonus like, yeah second third yeah Oh, Bo Nix in that jersey is erotic. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I could see them being Rattler guys, like in the in the third round. People like Spencer Rattler. I, every time I try and convince myself, maybe that's a good idea. I look at his numbers; they're bad. Uh, and then we, rem- we scout the trace, not the stats. <laughs> and then I remember when he was—he's also older than a lot of these guys. Like he's older than Jaden Daniels, who's old. Uh, where's Penix? He's older than Michael Penix Jr., which feels impossible. Okay, by, now that's tough business. Yeah, that's by tough. a month, but older nevertheless. Uh, I think back to when he was on QB one. Uh, that that show that was following him when he was a high school senior. People change, sure they do. He's an absolute dickhead back then. Maybe he changed. I maybe he didn't. I I, I wouldn't be. Uh, it seems like a guy, even if you take him in the third, he's just going to be like, this is my team. And if the Patriots are already saying, like, we want to sit a guy for a year, doesn't seem like the move for us. Last guy I remember that happened to was Desmond Ritter. Desmond Ritter had a whole plan. Like, I'll be the starter by this game. We'll be hoisting the trophy by this game. And now he's getting ready to learn Glendale, buddy. He's he getting ready to learn COD. God, God bless you if your team got ridded by the Ritter. During his tenure, it was truly a shooting star in the sky mm-hmm. type thing. Seeing Desmond Ritter quarterback and beat, he beat uh, a number of playoff teams. I Jordan can't remember Lowe? the narrative I used to have to try to spin, but it's no <laughs> no longer my business. Enjoy, Arizona. What was number four on this uh, list of asides? Four. This wasn't one of them, but let me. The Falcon social media account, man. Oh, All the brother. pictures of Kirk with the chains. <laughs> Come on, dog. Like the whole point, the whole reason any of that works is because the Vikings like him for things. Like they put the chains on him after he throw for three seventy five sure. and three touchdowns. He ain't did shit yet. What are you gonna do when he? D- when he actually does the stuff. What are you gonna do? I'm scared to even ask. <laughs> but now, fourth random thing. I wish I would have thought of this earlier. I'm keeping track of how hard the hardest that I laughed in each month. January. I didn't have this idea then. Also, I don't think shit was very funny in January. I don't know how hard I was laughing in January. <laughs> February, February, the hardest I laughed was breaking the news to you that Damar Hamlin 
lost comeback player of the <laughs> of the devastating news. That was <laughs> that was the hardest I laughed for February. The hardest I laughed for March. Is that baby get lined up with the straight race? Oh, man. <laughs> just that entire account. I lost hours <laughs> on that. There's an entire account of. Uh, it's in a different language, but this guy is lining up like it, the mothers be there. Like, oh, these are months old. When I say infants, infants. literal infants, he putting the straight razor on the infant's head. I know a taper, cuz that's crazy. That boy's burping milk and got a, a starburst line to size, put the lines on the slit, keep the beard high, want the mustache dark. You can put the razor on it. A straight razor on an infant, man. I said, I I, I think I've seen too much. Uh, infants, especially the age of these ones getting lined up, their heads are like guacamole soft. Like you... <laughs> You couldn't believe how soft these things are. And they're also super unpredictable when it comes to when they're going to move next. So the, mm-hmm. naturally you want like the sharpest, uh, most precise thing right up against their top. Like these kids look horrified. They look fresh, but horrified nevertheless. Look, <laughs> stupid dope fresh, but horrified nonetheless. So if I, no, nah, I just go on that account and scroll a little bit. And I gotta learn. Like this is make me want to learn. I think it's, I think it's Spanish. I gotta learn. I gotta ham up on my Spanish just so I can hear the like in the image. Like, oh, my client traveled in from Buckhead area. This is eight hundred fifty dollar haircut. He asked for enhancements, so we added the. Enhance- I need to hear all that for infant. The my client came in, shit his pants, threw up all over, <laughs> <laughs> threw up all over me, and. The, and then ask for a, a, a high taper. Uh, with the, <laughs> this service is four hundred and fifty pesos. Y'all, let me know how y'all feel about this. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Have you seen uh, Buddy in Kansas City uh, who does haircuts? Uh, say more. I don't know. He's his biggest thing is he's like he's got the sharpest razor in the city uh when he lines people up he's very entertaining I, that's what i've been falling asleep to lately is his instagram page i just go reel to reel um and he's just lining people up all over the place he hits people with a spice bomb and he said spice ball oh okay i know that the spice ball. okay i know what yeah. you're talking about now yeah and those videos kill me and yeah I'm those in are funny that mode and he's just staring right <laughs> into the camera <laughs> Ooh, my client came in looking awful. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> It'd just be the guy sitting in the chair. Just... <laughs> it's looking like a doofus. Yeah. He's, he's like, I put him, I put him under the dryer. I, I went and got a massage. I got, I got lined up myself. I had a sandwich. <laughs> he's having himself a grand old time. And then he's like, then I abused the fuck out of this guy in my chair. <laughs> Uh, he paid me four hundred and twelve dollars. Uh. <laughs> yeah, let me know what y'all think. <laughs> nah, if, if, listen, if he not lining up infants, then I, how, how steady are your hands? <laughs> how steady are your hands? You gotta be able to line up a a, 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 a rabbit or something. <laughs> like I just I'm, that's the next level. Like that lion like, in China. Have you seen that? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, a fresh lineup for me and me and all my pride. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, I can't. That's, hey, I, that's I, the hardest. Uh, that's the hardest. I'm gonna laugh for April too. The baby with the lineup absolutely slaughtered me. Yeah, I don't know. I was trying to think maybe something can top that in March, but that would be that would be too much laughter. I would say maybe so. It's a, it's a few days left in the month, but. No, I've I've definitely missed a burner. Like laugh, eating breakfast, <laughs> like, yeah, brushing my teeth, yeah, going to sleep, all that. Because the baby's just looking at up at him like, Are you sure? Make my shit straight, yeah. yeah. I know I Ugly know zero boy. words. I have very. Yeah. I'm not really familiar with this earth that I've been brought to yet. I but this feels incorrect to me. Him putting, him putting the like the line to get his 
Hilarious, man. Uh, it's the funniest. Maybe I've ever seen. Maybe it's the funniest thing I've ever seen. Uh, let's build me Guantanamo quickly. Um, <laughs> I see you finished a, a cinema. Oh, I've been back at it. I got a. I finished Pulp Fiction. I think the last time that people heard is I was watching Pulp Fiction. <laughs> Mid fiction, uh, yeah. I was. I just started though. I was like, it's been too long. So I had to just start it over. I did watch, uh, I think, Boys in the Hood. That's the last one I think I mentioned. Yes. On here. I did an Oppenheimer. I did an Oppie. Wow. Art. <laughs> what a movie. He had it on in every single scene. I was keeping track of it. He had it on in every single scene. Uh, I did watch John Wick 4. Okay. I did watch Madam Web. Oh, no. Why? <laughs> Me and my nephew were at the movie theater. I was like, what do you want to see? He was like, I heard this is like so bad. He was like, I kind of want to see if it's that bad. One, he was, his ass was sleeping seven minutes. So he don't even know <laughs> how bad. He has no idea. Unbelievable. I was about to wake him up. Bro. I was like, yeah. This is your idea, buddy. Like, you're going to watch this garbage. <laughs> Matt, that sucked. That movie was <laughs> awful. <laughs> I, I don't write any notes. For, I wrote beside Oppenheimer. I just wrote a couple quotes. The uh, and now I am become death destroyer of worlds. And now it's your turn to deal with the consequences of your achievement. I was like, that's a bar. <laughs> beside Madam Web, I just wrote in parentheses zero out of ten. That's yeah. the only note. That sounds right. Blue Streak. That's a rewatch. But okay, right. after that, oh, I had to, I had to put him onto some real cinema. So we watched Blue Streak directly after watching Madam Web to <laughs> recalibrate. Big George Foreman okay. on Netflix, not bad. Uh, Mia Culpa, the Tyler Perry, uh, the Kelly Rowland movie, if we're being clear while we watched, the Kelly Rowland movie, which she was sensa sensational, <laughs> Kelly. She, she's getting better looking every time I see, like every time. This, this woman's agree. been in our collective conscience as a society for like 25 years now uh and aging i don't even want to say like just not aging at all i would say keep in mind she was fine when she entered our life correct yes this wasn't a like oh man she glowed up no the, the, she was glowed when we seen her mm -hmm. and now she's i don't know pushing the limits of, of, of <laughs> glow as we know it <laughs> yeah you know somebody else who's pushing those limits Pam Greer. I watched Jackie Brown. That's a good movie. I, I don't know if this is a hot take. I prefer Jackie Brown to Pulp Fiction. I don't know how people feel about it. I hear of Pulp Fiction as the cult classic, so I feel like that's the more popular one. But me personally, I enjoyed watching Jackie Brown more. Pulp Fiction's really where Tarantino like hit the scene and hit it hard, obviously. Yeah, like I, if that's your debut, then I guess. Right. I think Jackie Brown may have been directly after. It's, there's going to be a Tarantino timeline out there. I mean, so he hadn't did that many movies, right? Like he didn't no. have this like 25 movie thing. So probably pretty up there. That was a great movie. Uh, Pam Greer. That, that's the end of those notes. Uh, <laughs> Agreed. Yeah. Uh, oh, so excuse me. My apologies. I know people are screaming at their screens right now. Reservoir Dogs was first. That's what put okay, Tarantino okay, okay. on. And Reservoir okay. Dogs is a classic for sure. I don't need people screaming at me. Uh, Pulp Fiction was ninety four. Reservoir Dogs was ninety two. I don't know okay. why. Every time, every every list that tells me it's an order is not in fucking order. I don't, I don't know what's going on here. I think Jackie was it 97, 97 99 97 okay. was that directly after Pulp Fiction or did he oh, yeah that was 94 to 97 but that was the next movie that came out because then it okay. was the Kill Bills in 0304 okay and then it was yeah Inglorious Bastards in 09 Django in 12 uh Hateful Eight was sometime after that and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood I started Hateful Eight. I don't think I'll be finishing that. I don't think you'll like Hateful Eight. <laughs> I, listen, I'm telling you, I've, I think it's, I think it's six. I've watched two chapters, and like the hard end flying around. Regard, I was like, this is just kind of not interesting. Like them just on this journey. Maybe it picks up. But it doesn't. 
Stop yeah, it. I was gonna say I, I, <laughs> I was like, yeah, I think I'm so that's on the list, but I'm that's probably the first one I'm probably not gonna finish. But yeah, Jackie Brown, uh and Devil in a Blue Dress. That's the last one I just finished. That was a great, great movie. Okay. Denzel, Jennifer Bills, uh Tom Sizemore. That was good cinema. But Opp- I gotta start dressing like Oppenheimer, man. And just and just doing just doing the brim of my hat just like that. Just <laughs> As I look out on the destruction I have caused, <laughs> it's me and me alone. Yes. Uh, if you, how, so, how did you feel about Pulp Fiction? Obviously, Hateful Eight. Is, I don't like Hateful Eight, so I'm sure you didn't love it. <laughs> but... Not a fan. I just say, why the fuck did Samuel Jackson agree to this? Uh, Pulp was good. Again, like I see more for the, like the way the story was told, the influence all that but again i just go back to jack like jackie brown was one i was like captivated by the whole time and there was no gimp scene either to uh <laughs> take me aback <laughs> i don't think i'm trying to remember jay i don't think jackie had i don't that. think so no i don't think so all, all all-time great chair uh character max cherry and i could have been that role uh yeah yeah max just standing there looking longingly uh pam Greer in the mall just <laughs> These are your options. I could have did that, man. It should have. It should have been me. Listen, you guys had your your back and forth at casting. You know why you didn't get that role? It just wasn't meant to be. Get over it. <laughs> now it was done. Is done. It was good movie, regardless. So if you but, so in terms of Tarantino, you've seen Jackie Brown, Pulp Fiction, and the, the two chapters of The Hateful Eight. Is that the whole? I've seen. Now I've seen Django. I've seen in Django. One. One or two of the Kill Bills. Okay. That, I think that might be next. I might do that series. Um, I haven't seen Inglorious Bastards. I haven't seen Reservoir Dogs. So, yeah, just those. Yeah, Reservoir before, Dogs uh, is, <clears throat> is real cinema. Real deal cinema. Inglorious Bastards, very funny. Uh, if you go into, again, I hear like, good things about If you this. go into it like The Sopranos and, and view it as a comedy, <laughs> Inglorious Bastards, very funny. Um once Upon a Time in Hollywood came out at a weird time. It was like right before the pandemic, I want to say. I think it was released right before it. And then I didn't see it until it was the pandemic and it got released. So I, I, I can't sit here and say I've seen it like front to back straight through. A lot of people think it's his best work. So it makes me want to okay. keep going back. But it can't, again, it just came out at such a weird point in my life. I almost feel like I've missed it entirely. And I just can't right. watch it. But yeah, a lot of heat on the resume. Lot and Madam Webb. Oh my god. <laughs> Sweeney didn't didn't sway it for you? Her acting prowess wasn't on display? She was she was her best version of herself. Okay. Is the compliment I can give her. And honestly, I can't remember the other two. There's like three I don't remember any of their names. I don't know why I said I can't remember three of their <laughs> names. I can't remember the main lady. I just uh, Don Johnson's daughter. Who's the main lady? It's uh, Dakota. Dakota Johnson, yeah. Respect. You talk about giving less than nothing. <laughs> Which, I, I mean, look, the papers were signed. That check hit her account either way. I'm sure, it, I'm not sure, and to be fair to her, she wasn't exactly, like, tanking a movie that was going to break all the re- Like It wasn't <laughs> her. She did not hold no. this movie back, I should say. But it was times watching, I was like, she's the main character? Then the bad guy, you couldn't even hear his voice all the time. The story ain't make sense. It was not art. All the all the promotion I saw for this movie was Dakota Johnson being like, "Yeah, they lied to us, so here's a movie." Like that was the entirety of the press run. That's where I'm like, okay, <laughs> like I, I had to do some. Ex- I've never researched a movie I did not like this much in my life. Like, no, if I would watch a movie, I'd never see it. Like, I, you're out of here to me. In one ear, in one eye, and out the other. This one, I said, I have to figure out how this happened. <laughs> this, one, this can't happen again. Two, I need to know like how, how much money, time, resources went into this. And it seems like the story was legit changed from the time people signed on. It seems like they had started acting the movie out, and the like story was completely changed. So at that point, people were like, "Well, what the fuck? Like, what, yeah. this is not what we signed on to do, but we're a month into shooting this." 
So everybody kind of gave up together, which is good. Mike Epps is there. <laughs> always good. Always good to see Mike Epps uh, and things. Adam Scott. I like Adam Scott as well. He's there. And nah, I can't wait to see Madam Webb too. That shit's gonna be. I can't imagine that'll <laughs> be in production anytime soon. I was watching like movie reviewers, and in the comments they were like, "Bro, we never heard you talk like this." <laughs> <laughs> like the John Wall Brad Bill, I ain't never heard you talk. <laughs> never ever. Ever. And he would say he's like I he's like I hate to be critical. I know how much time and where all the you know things we don't see go into making a movie, even if you don't like it. But he's like that was a piece <laughs> of shit. It was all. I said that nah, that boy is that boy is correct in his assessment. So what do you, what do you see next in your your viewing docket? Oh, by the way, I'm not saying it since you said it. But I saw some rumors floating that they may be rebooting Little Shop of Horrors. I, I need to know the names attached before I can. I, there's no names. Is Moranis in or out? I can't That's imagine I Moranis know. is in. I can't. I don't see why he would be in. <laughs> he's like I already. I did. don't see why he'd be. I don't see why they do it if he's out. I agree. They shouldn't do it. Like there are some things that just most remakes just don't need to be touched. Like it, it, it is what it is, and I don't know why they're messing with this. Uh, who could but, even who could even give Rick Moranis now? Nobody but Rick Moranis. Oh, no one's giving. They put Moranis. some glasses on Channing. Uh, was it the Channing Tatum? It was like, yeah, this is geeky. What I was. Yeah, do you say, believe it? Yeah. What I was going to say for Hateful Eight, the only good part, and I know certain people were acting really well throughout, but it did, that doesn't make for a great movie. Real well. <laughs> In the middle, there's just like a, a Channing Tatum halftime show. <laughs> it has nothing to do with the rest of the movie. Uh, that's the best part by far of The Hateful Eight, but it's not worth like the three hour and 50 minute sludge to get to the... It's not obviously at the end, but it's not worth it. It's not worth it. No, I'm sure it's on I'll, YouTube if you wanted to really watch it. <laughs> Vimeo, I'll find it yeah. somewhere. I might, I might go one of the Tarantinos. I might... I fall into like the Denzel collection, man. Denzel just getting his bag and just be acting, man. He Easy does. Rollins. So yeah, I, I might go back to the Denzel route. This is how behind I am I move. I think I've watched like two this month. I was like, I need to make February. I was watching like black movies, black directors. March, I was like, let me do like either women leads or women uh, directed roles. And now I was like, I might be movied out. Not even I'm not even sexist. I'm just movied out, bro. Like I've never watched twenty movies in one calendar. I'm at twenty right now. That's rare for me. Very. So the rarest. I might got yeah. I might gotta push that to to April. I don't know who I thought I was trying to have a theme from oh, I'll watch uh Indigenous Peoples movies. It's like you're gonna end up watching Blue Streak again. That's what you're gonna do. So All roads do lead back to Blue Streak, but I mean you're talking about it is Women's History Month. I think that's what it's called. I think it's also Spanish History Month. They, they kind of just jam a lot. Of, there's only 12 months, you understand. Some months are going to have to get shared. I mean, uh, what is August got? What is... <laughs> they take August. Out. August gets no holidays, no nothing. This is August. There's, no one cares. Um, but it was St. Patrick's Day. And did I, in the flesh, see a legend? An Irish-American legend. The very same... Scruffington J. McGruff on the scene in the flesh. Scruffington O'Gruff? O'Gruff was out there? I couldn't believe it. I, I put my, my daughter was on my shoulder. I put her down. I was like, I'm going to be weak in the knees. I can't, I can't <laughs> risk injury here. That, did she know who he was? Like, does his, does his popularity, does his fame travel? So kids don't watch commercials anymore. Like they, there's nothing that they see that has commercials attached to them. So it's just it, it's not part of their part of their bag, at, and it's a shame they don't get commercials for anything. Like they're either on the streaming services, which will slowly introduce commercials and infuriate them. Like anytime we watch YouTube on the the main TV and an ad pops up, they lose their minds. So like, what is happening? Who are these? This is people? not content. <laughs> yeah, like, what the fuck is going on? Get this off my screen now. We grew up. There were no you would. You could change the channel. That was the best you got. That was if you were to avoid yeah, get another ads. ad. Yeah, most more often than not you would, but that's just not 
part of their day to day. So no, they they just saw a dog and a tie, and that was also a delight for them. But they didn't they didn't get like the the gravity of the situation. Nah, how could you if you if you wasn't there for for scruff? I seen him Balenci's he had on too. The boy tried not to flex, but <laughs> he couldn't help it. Realize, realize. He couldn't help it. It's it's not a flex when it's just your day to day. Taking a bite out of bad fashion. <laughs> he looked right at me. Came in the way. I fainted. I was, yeah, I was weak on my knees, man. He could have did the finger guns at me. I would have uh, <laughs> been unkind. But in between, I mean, it's probably been tough for you to, to catch up on all this cinema, considering you've been molding the minds of the youth. Listen, man, when the when the youths call for career day, Uncle Trilly answers. Did a career day last, yeah, last week uh, in Riverdale. Kids are hilarious. All the funniest. Like. To each other, to no one in particular, to teachers, to everybody. Just like one just walked by with their lunch, and and they was like, "This is unpre." Just pointed to the lunch and said, "This is unpresentable," and just kept walking. That was a, killed me, took me out. Nobody else thought it was funny. <laughs> but I was like, "Just Im- imagine being these are middle school, you eleven years old, just showing your disdain, but like this right there, the, uh, unpresentable." <laughs> And they kept moving. <laughs> kept moving. I had a chance. They had to talk to the kids. They they seemed to enjoy it. I was very surprised. The things I were surprised, I tried to put just pictures of some of the people uh, like either met or interviewed come across. And I was like, I don't know. If, like, these kids were born in 2010. Uh, no, like 2012. You know what I'm saying? They knew who Waka Flocka Flame was. I threw him in there because he's from the area. They knew who Joe Johnson was. That's the one. I was like, I was like, the, that brought a tear to me. I said, the kids know about ISO Joe. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They knew about ISO Joe. Uh, they knew about Kareem. I regret to inform that Kareem is now uh, LeBron took his record guy. That's Aww. just kind of his, yeah. I said, man, there are grown men that would fight y'all. Like y'all just said those. <laughs> So those words right now. That man scored almost 40,000 points. <laughs> and he just, uh, numero dos. Now, <laughs> Nipsey, they enjoyed the, 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 the people were big Nipsey fans. Okay. Quinta Brunson, the people, the kids love Abbott Elementary. That. I could see that, yeah. So, yeah, that, they want to know a lot of, like, where do I get to go? They, I feel like every class, at, me and the other presenters were talking, every single class, they was asked, like, hey, how much money do y'all make? And I was like, you know what? I respect. I was like, in our day, that was so taboo. You would have gotten in trouble for even asking that. These kids, they don't do taboo. I respect the hell out of that. They're like, if this is going to be worth my time, I need to know it's worth my time. Yeah. So, I lied to them. Um, <laughs> outside that, you good opportunity, man. I enjoyed uh, r- wrapping it up with the kids. Yeah, we don't need more competition. LeBron and JJ Reddick just announced the podcast. Ah, I saw that. Right, right I saw on that our goddamn day. heels. Like, hey, give me a break. JJ, you get enough. LeBron said, man, everything don't have to be for clicks. I said, you're LeBron James. You can say shit like that. <laughs> Give me a break. That is, uh, yeah, that, I mean, that was amazing. You <laughs> you just mo- tell them the use. Like, yeah, no, I talk into a microphone and someone sends me a check every month. Any questions? Any <laughs> any questions at all? <laughs> I was like, I don't have an alarm clock. I was like, it's it's, it's going all right. I was like, now listen. Oh, this blew their mind. I was like, how old are all of y'all? That's when they tell me. I was like, you understand when I was your age, YouTube didn't exist. Podcast did not exist. There was one kid, he was, had his head on his desk. He shot straight up <laughs> when I said that. Like, the PGA just disbelief. landed. He just jumped yeah, out the window. <laughs> he jumped straight out the window. Uh, like the Simpsons get, then jumped back in. Uh, <laughs> but... Uh, I was like, no, just just keep that in mind. This did not exist. So in 20 years, you have no idea what is going to. Is it for good or bad? You just have no idea. Right. And even then, like, I'm trying to think. When did, like, YouTube or podcast become, like, an acceptable word and not like a, 
I saw this on YouTube not being like something you have to tell or show somebody. It's like, oh, I probably saw that as well. I was also on YouTube. Right, yeah. Yeah, you what? <laughs> right, yeah, I was listening to the, the campfire. I was like, this might be radio and TV. It might not. Right. In 20 years, these might be bust, but they might be radio and TV. So, I, Yeah, I don't want to get old takes exposed in 20 years. I feel like YouTube's too <laughs> big to fail. You know what I mean? Like, they're just part of Google. Oh, boy. They're just part of Google. Like, I, even with all the changes, you know what I mean? CBS, NBC, ABC still stand tall amongst everyone else, even with all the million different ways. Like, they're like, now you're still going like to come meta, here. Like Meta, Meta, yes. Google, yeah. Yeah, like, I, some companies just feel too big to fail. A podcast for sure could go away at any point in time. Like, that wouldn't sort of shock me. There'll be a, it'll evolve, not necessarily go away. It'll become something else. But I think YouTube right. just, they've just got, such big property <laughs> on the internet. Like we can't see it. You can't visualize it. YouTube's taking up a lot of servers. I just don't know how that's going to go away. Well, that's once I realized that it is essentially like if you didn't want to deal with cable or streaming or working in, in that position, why would you not just have YouTube on all times like television? You would. Right. You can watch things and listen to things there. Right. Like radio didn't go away. It kind of became like podcasts are just controlled radio, you know right. what I'm saying? Like the radio before was, that's why I worry. It was a bad boy, uncontrolled. You turn on, he in the middle of a sentence. You don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> and there's no way to go back. There's no, like, oh my God. Yeah, and that's how I did it. And you're like, oh, how you did what? How you did what? <laughs> so that, yeah, that was mind blowing. Also for me as well, it's like, none of these shits are really that old. No. At all, but like you said, YouTube does feel entrenched in a long-lasting way. I can't wait as soon as we hang up. YouTube, under. <laughs> People never even hear that. YouTube, sold, canceled. Google, closed. Yeah, shut yeah. their doors. Daily Motion bought YouTube for $87 <laughs> billion, dollars, and now everybody's back to Daily Motion. <sighs> well, I mean, the people keep making decisions that alarm me like, I don't know. I, putting a water park on Lake Lanier, uh, for instance, uh, that's the headline I see. A new water park to open at Georgia's Lake Lanier amid haunted reputation. <laughs> Could not beat the haunted rumors. Uh. I just Googled Lake Lanier water park, the top stories on our, on Google. Uh, who thought it was a good idea to build a water slide at Lake Lanier? Uproar is haunted Lake Lanier. <laughs> Man-made reservoir. Oh, Daily Mail getting into it. I got to read this whole thing. Uh, uproar. <laughs> it's not, I'm not going to allow the ads. Uproar is haunted Lake Lanier. The man-made. I have one more pop. We haven't talked enough about pop-ups <laughs> making a, quite a oh, comeback. Dude. We had pop-ups gone. Oh, <laughs> I saw, I don't even know how true it is, but they're like the guy who invented pop-up ads later was like, I if I knew what this was going to be, I would have never, I would have never unleashed this on, I, I didn't see it, how could I have known? How did would you, I have known? Did you see the dickhead yesterday who posted the picture of uh, the, the inside of the airplane? Like, why don't we have ads up here where the bags oh. go? And everyone was like, if you don't shut your fucking stupid mouth, you absolute asshole. Listen. One, they were right to say it. Two, it's one of those things. How it, if you're standing in the same place on the bus or the train, there's ads there. So why would the yeah? yeah so why? Yeah. Oh, they're they're coming now. For of course sure. they are. Yeah, of course they are. Like I get, it's one of those things. It's why I didn't quote tweet it and pile on. I try not to do that once something's already being piled on, anyways. But it's like I get what his brain was saying. Like it's shocking there aren't ads here. But the way he said it and everyone else's reaction was also completely fair. Just being like, if you don't keep your fucking mouth shut <laughs> right now. Man, listen, you're going to have to watch an ad to get your mask to drop down soon. It's like, skip ad, skip ad, skip ad. And then you get your oxygen mask. A Boeing is not even going to be a mask that comes down. It's just like, oh, whoops, man. we've got to put those. I got to get on a Boeing this week, man. I don't feel good about it. 
No, you shouldn't. I have nothing positive to say. Uproar is haunted Lake Lanier, the man-made reservoir built atop burial grounds, which has seen hundreds of bizarre drownings and electrocution deaths, is now set to open new 30-mile-per-hour water slide coaster. I don't like that they're trying to jam water slides and roller coasters together anywhere, let alone here. <laughs> Does it say the name of the park? Do you know the name of the park yet? Or does it say it? Fins Up Water Park. No, no. There's a different name for, I guess, for, or maybe it's for one of the exhibits in there. It's going to be called Apocalypso. <laughs> oh, yeah, I just clicked on another one. Yeah. <laughs> the name of the Lake Lanier water slide of doom is going to be a very non ominous Apocalypso. This is all, it's Margaritaville branded, <laughs> which makes. What did what did Big Buff know? Why did did they have to get Big JB? You know what I mean? Yeah, he wouldn't. I feel like they wanted this years in the past. He would have never signed. He would have never signed off on this. I don't want to think Margaritaville and Lake Lanier ever. I don't want that. Uh, that's not synergy that I prefer. No, this is it's troubles. All of it's troublesome. Uh, very troubles. A first of its kind water ride. I <laughs> listen. Yeah, yeah. The one that sends you right to hell. Okay, yeah, first Mo of its kind. <laughs> Most of them. <laughs> oh man, even the Brits are getting in on this. USA's mm -hmm. most haunted lake that has claimed seven hundred <laughs> lives since nineteen fifty six will open water slide. <laughs> seven hundred blokes have gone belly up. I said, damn, they getting us over there, too. <sighs> the lead for this uh, in uni, lad. What do you do if a lake continues to claim lives over the decades? You open a water slide, of course. <laughs> I said, we're cutting the middle man out. People want to go there and people want to die, right? How is nobody capitalizing off of that? <laughs> We're going to expedite the process. It ends today. You get a season pass. We'll kill your whole family. Over the course of the for one forty nine ninety five. Yeah, what was number five? What was what was, what was number five? I'm looking out of here. What's a realistic number? How much credit could Bruno Mars run up in Vegas? They say he's at fifty million. For people who haven't seen this, he's got a residency. Is it already started? That's the part. No, has his residency already started, or he's signed on to do? I would residency. hope he's signed. I would hope it already started if he's already got the bill, unless the, the residency is to pay off the bill, which is very possible what, as well. The number that I heard is that he's getting 90 a year. So they're like, if he ran up 50 and it's like, okay, that's people run up like crazy high numbers all the time. You don't cash out every single time you go to play car, especially if they know you a person like that. But what's the realistic number where they'd have to have a meeting? It's like, hey, we have to kill Bruno Mars. <laughs> it's like, <we're, laughs> Because I, I I don't know much about Vegas, but I, I thought I thought we was already approaching that. But if he got to like sixty sixty five, they're like, no, seriously, he won't be able to out work this. He's already he's too deep in the hole. This won't get better. We have to kill Bruno Mars. So I'm saying from various uh, accounts, all of them have blue checks. So I don't really trust any of them. Um, but it's like. <laughs> Uh, from from BSO, uh, if you have, oh he said a couple of things. One, if you haven't seen Bruno Mars in Vegas, you should. It's an incredible show. Two, MGM properties don't let anyone run up fifty million in gambling debts. That just doesn't happen. And he links to an article um, where he, it most likely does not have fifty. Uh, then no uh, no jumper. I'm not reading what they have to say. <laughs> Pop crave. Uh, that's what I mean. If he's making ninety. But the debt's fifty. Does that mean he's actually at negative one forty? You know what I mean? That's like what I'm saying. How bad is it? Yeah. <laughs> I guess he's been doing residencies for nine years. So if it were okay. fifty over a nine year period, that would make more sense. You know what I mean? But it would also make sense that he would cash out at the end of every. Again, I don't own multi billion dollar casinos. I lost all of those. But yeah. I don't know how that works. You know what I mean? Like he's an employee technically. I don't. I don't know. That's a, he just doesn't get a paycheck some days. He's like, no, I've already, <laughs> or even that bad. 
Because it's like when Barkley was saying, I can't remember what the number, Charles Barkley said he's lost some crazy number of millions in his lifetime playing golf. And people are like, oh, that's crazy. It's like, I don't, with the way these guys golf, the numbers they wager and how long these things, like you might play right. uh, five rounds of golf in a weekend, four weekends a month, all summer, and just keep a running tab. You're not closing out every single time. So if Bruno really was like, listen, man, I'm telling you, Justin Fields, 2024 MVP, plus 88 million. I'm willing to put September shows, all of it, on this. And they say you're down 50 million, Bruno. Let's go for a walk. All the sources, I think Complex was the first people I saw post this, and then it kind of just spread from there. So I'm always weary on things that like don't really have like the and the first complex post had no link. It was just and I complex I think was just recently sold too. So they might be trying some shit. They might be trying some new shit. Um, but everything's kind of been linked back to that. All the local Las Vegas accounts I've seen have all just been like, this isn't true, even a little bit. The only part that probably is true is that he has what I think is called a marker. And given his stature, it's probably pretty large. But the number 50 million appears to just be pulled from the clouds. To answer your question, 15 is probably when when questions need to be asked by MGM. You know what I mean? 15 is around the time. Like 15 to 18, that's where, oh, did y'all hear Bruno Mars had a cancel his tour of shows? Uh Broke his ankle somehow. That's the first. I ain't seen none of them. I was like, it just showed up 50. I feel like we would have had an inkling of this before. And again, they didn't They didn't build Vegas by just being generous with lines of credit uh, that they can't collect upon. So, Especially when they know, at minimum, we know you're pulling in 90 a year. Because we it comes right. in through us. Like, we, we see the seats. Like, we see the banged out crowds. But yeah, I, I saw a couple of the other people put it perfectly. It's like, man, we we know he's uh, a big uh, booger sugar enthusiast, and he's gambling like this. Like, uh, listen, <laughs> he's bringing it back, he's bringing real music back. Also, any opening a club in Vegas was that that might have been more fake news too. I was like, is this part of that? Is this like if he opened up part of this and the club opening is part of his debt he has to pay off? Or it's called like the pinky ring because the pictures I saw looked they was like like a great place to. Do some sugar. <laughs> so Tremendous if that's his inv- listen, if that's where the fifty million went, he's gonna make all that bad. He won't even need the residency soon, if that's the case. Yeah, because I I believe yeah he's opening that speakeasy. So I'm sure that's it's all tied together. This this may just be viral marketing. The more we're talking about, of course. It. It's just the M- MGM wasn't doing too hot. Vegas was going under. Yeah. <laughs> like, man, we, us and YouTube down the same day, we can't. Yeah. It's like Jackson and Foss. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Out of there. Same week, same day, even. So, yeah, that's 50s outrageous. But, like, it, does he must live there. Have you seen the Elvis movie? No. Add that to your list because it's. Does it need to be seen? It's. I mean, it's such a bad movie, but it's very funny how bad it is. And some people like do have it critically acclaimed. I, I don't think you will. It's. It's very. I guess the guy like, still talk like Elvis, right? He he was like, I can't stop talking like Elvis, Daddy. Yeah, he's stuck. He's completely <laughs> stuck. <laughs> I don't want to hear about method acting if you're not still talking like Elvis. Eight years. <laughs> After your role, I just don't want. I don't. I don't really care about what process you need to get into inside your trailer. If you don't just re- just a swivel hip every once in a while, like, right. I played Elvis upwards of a decade ago, and I just it just comes and goes. There's there's a line he delivers. Oh, fuck, I'm not gonna be able to find it quick. But there's a line that they say in the movie. I mean, they basically they basically make it seem like he was that guy on Beale Street, like he was that deal. Um, everyone loved him. No one had a crossword to say about Elvis. 
<laughs> Old EP? That's good money. Good money EP. And like they they put the scene in where he finds out uh Martin Luther King was shot. And whatever he says, they swear he it's word for word, bar for bar, what he said in real life. Hearing it on the big screen is tough. <laughs> it's a tough one. Uh, listen. Sometimes you gotta take some creative liberties. You gotta uh, lie. To the, like create somebody else to say that so Elvis can't be like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> it's something like man. Yeah, they killed him in Memphis. Uh, I always love that he told the truth. Something along those lines. It's like that's not. <laughs> I don't think either of these gentlemen need to be tied they forever. His jaw, off, Elvis. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, add that to the list. Tom Hanks plays quite a quite a role in that one. Um, MLK. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, that was Chet. They had Chet in the movie okay. for, for the... yeah, uh, Patois Martin Luther King. Yeah, <laughs> I don't want to give Madam Webb any <laughs> idea. <laughs> <laughs> this is the multiverse. You never know. You never uh, know. <laughs> it, it shouldn't be, and it shouldn't be is what I say. But yeah, that's that's episode two. We'll be back next week. Wait, I got I got one oh. more football note. It's a I kinda like what you're doing, even if it's like you pay too much to do it. What the Titans got going on. Okay. Like Ridley, like on the whole, it's like, is that too much money for Calvin Ridley? Probably so. Are him and DeAndre Hopkins like starting caliber receivers? Yes. Tony Pollard a year after the injury, see if there's something there. Okay. And I think the draft's going to shake right. Like Joe Alt might just fall to them at Absolutely. seven. So I'm starting to kind of see the vision. This was one of those like free agency. You can't necessarily look like it's it's all sticker price. Every number is going to be too too high. Sure, tough free agency works. But it's like can Ridley Hopkins, uh, who, like Tajay Spears and Pollard, can they get a line in there and? Maybe craft something from there. Maybe so, because that division's junk, too. So they was like, I like them upgrading the talent. It costs, but free agency costs. It is what it is. Well, it's also like, I like the Pollard signing because they already had Spears, and i I very right. high on Spears. I like the Ridley signing because they already have Hopkins. Like, if they didn't have those guys and they were just spending on this, I'd be like, I don't see it but they're right. spending on these guys Those can't be your building blocks right to be number twos it takes a lot of pressure off burks if he's ever going to put it together he should be pretty fucking open uh this year and they took uh skaronsky last year right out of northwestern yep. so yeah if they can get alton skaronsky yeah you're, you're definitely seeing pretty quickly too from when they cleaned house a couple of years ago this is year two of that guy. I can't remember who's who's uh, making the decisions now, but this is his second draft. Like Carthon or something. Yeah, uh, this this would be yeah. his second draft, and yeah, they're they're doing all they can to see if Levis is the guy. You know what I mean? They're you can't say that they're like hanging him out to dry. They're they're making a run at it. What I the only thing I'll say about Ridley is a lot of Patriot fans were upset that the Patriots didn't match and and sign him or even go above what the the Titans gave him. And all I can say is thank God, not because I don't like Ridley, the player I do, but if he came to new England instead of Tennessee and said, uh, truth be told, I wanted to go back to Jacksonville. People would already be wanted him <laughs> traded or dead. One or the other, like <laughs> a cut outright cut. No care what that does to the, the cap for the, the next couple of years. That can fly in Tennessee. Eighty-seven I, million dollars dead cap. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's you can say something like that in Tennessee. I'm sure some fans are pissed, not all, but it wasn't a big story like it would have been if it had been said the New England Patriots opening press conference. Like, oh boy, that wouldn't have gone well. So I'm, really I'm, holding a newspaper that says, "Wish I was a Jaguar." <laughs> he's still wearing his Jags jersey, like ah. I'll give it a shot, but I'm I've already demanded a trade back to Duval. <laughs> Wait, so the J I think the pick ended up being a third. So they traded a third for one year of Ridley. They had him for two or I guess a year and a half, but he set for a year. He played one or did he play two years with them? 
Uh, no, he just played this one year in Jackson. Just this one, yeah. But I think there was like a fifth or something last year as well. I thought the there was like... Year, I think you're right. Yeah, there's like a fifth or a sixth last draft. And then this draft, it depended on... Which, that was quite a, a rule skirt. It was like if he re-signs, it's re-signs a two. With, yeah. But if it's after the deadline, it's technically a new year. So it would just be a signing. That feels that, <laughs> like quite, <laughs> quite a workaround. Fine with it. Yeah, 2023 fifth and a 2024 second. I think it ended up being a third. A third. Yeah, yes. it did not turn to a second. But you just traded a a third for Ridley in a year where you didn't make the playoffs? Like, is that going to ultimately tank the Jaguars? No. But a round three pick something you can give away for one year of a guy? That doesn't feel the way to sustain stuff. Josh Allen not pay franchise tag. That doesn't feel like a sustainable way to show your guys you care about them. So I guess Jacksonville, they might be my one. I got some questions. Yeah. And I mean, it was, I still like the swing they took. I mean, I've seen my team trade a two for Muhammad Sanu. Like I'd much rather trade a three. And it's not like they weren't. Could have been Chase Claypool. So right. Yeah, exactly. Like yeah. I've seen teams do much stupider things uh, for trading for wide receivers. And they were in it. All the reports, Josina Anderson was giving minute-to-minute updates on this whole ordeal, which the more updates came out, I was like, he's not he's not coming here. Like, he's just not right. ending up here. Um, I didn't see the Titan. Everyone kind of just signed with a division rival. Across the league, everyone was just like, I don't want to move too far now. Well, listen, that guy cooked us twice last year. Let's <laughs> Let's avoid that if we can. So, yeah, at Tennessee, I still don't know how I feel about them. Obviously, there's still a draft and a lot of offseason to come, but I don't hate that they're trying. You know what I mean? There's so many teams across all sports actively not trying. I'm not going to fault a team for genuinely trying. Yeah, because it's – like I, I hope Billy Jeans is the guy, but if not, you've got a couple receivers. You've got your tackle, and I don't know where they played Skronsky. Like, or whether – like, if they get all – I don't know if that affects Skronsky's position because I know he was, like, tackle, guard, where they move him inside, outside. But in theory, you just have those guys still cheap for another quarterback. Like, say Levis just stinks this year or doesn't light it up in a way to where it's like, okay, this is our guy. Right. You got some decent tools in place for – like, I think the Pollard deal runs as long as Spears is. So, while. Well, Spears is cheap. Pollard is paid. That balances out. Right. You got receivers. Seems like there's some, there's a plan, at least. We'll yeah. see if it works. Yeah, it's it's one of those things that might not, but I, it's also one of the, like what I was saying earlier, if Levis isn't the guy, you have a team where it's not, well, we have 40 holes to fill. Of course you won't be appealing at that point. And you even saw it with them last time. They just went out and got Tannehill. Like, those are mm-hmm. options that I feel like are never discussed. It's always just that you have to draft a quarterback. It's like, it, there are other ways to do it. It's not the preferable way, and it's not a guaranteed way at all, but it can be done. Yeah, like, we just, I don't know if you want to make this your plan, but, again, Baker Mayfield, scrap heap to a $100 million deal. Geno Smith set for how many years? $100 right. million dollar deal. Golf, like, paid and then passed on and another conference championship so you can i don't know i just i feel like i've heard a lot of like older quarterback like if a guy didn't show it he'll never show it you have to move on there's it's like there's a disconnect we all realize how hard it's the most important position to have how few good ones there are but i don't feel like like y'all not really turning over every single rock to find one if it's right. important as important as you say it is right you just rather sign Tim Boyle and be like, yeah, this is a this is a top sixty four. Yeah, Charlie, uh, what's uh Peterman got re signed again, oh, man? I was brother. like, y'all, y'all not like y'all not even trying, dog. Y'all not even trying. The Saints, who were the team that did that, they were a team I thought could be lurking for Fields. Like, hey, let's get him in here. If he can't beat out Derek Carr, we just turn down his fifth year option. Easy, easy does it. If he can beat out Derek Carr, and now like we have Olave here, there's no reason to waste him. They have talent on that roster. It's the NFC South, like you said about the Falcons with Kirk. If you can get Fields, and I can picture Fields in that black and gold, kind of like what he's wearing with the fucking Steelers, that could have been 
terrifying. And they were like, we'll just go Peterman. Uh, we'll go the Peterman route. And it's like, all right. And then the Browns, <laughs> the Browns were like, we'll take Jameis. We'll take uh, Snoo Puntley. We're going to have four Warren Moon, <laughs> yeah. uh, Jameis Winston, yeah. <laughs> Fritz Pollard, like the first black quarterback ever. Now, that's – I would. Bo Monty uh, hit me to that. If a place got a black quarterback, they probably going to have a black backup. Because if things go wrong, like you don't want that uh, people chanting Derek Anderson's name when they have Cam Newton. <laughs> like Joe Flacco played a little too, little comeback player of the year. <laughs> well, they said, man, we'll get 19 other quarterbacks. Uh, thanks for the memories. Joe. Where, did Fl- where did Flacco go? I saw he got paid, but where's he at? Uh, he got like $8 million. Colts. Ah, that's right. Yeah. Okay, so he uh, he ah boy he's taking <laughs> men's shoes, yeah. Anthony Richardson, yeah. <laughs> again, this this will be the test. Andy Richardson will like again, who played what four or five games last yeah. year? He's gonna have to get off to a hot start this year. It'll be like I don't, we just paid Pittman, we just paid Taylor. I don't know why Joe Flacco just showed he could do it. Flacco's why not the just... guy I want breathing down my neck because the fans will start chanting for. <laughs> For elite Joe Flacco, and that's not something a young developing quarterback needs. This I would like Giants. Maybe I was thinking of the team, like teams that people were like, "Well, they don't need Fields; they have a quarterback." I was like, "Yeah, the Saints have a quarterback because they gave Derek Carr 150 million dollars." Right. It wasn't a good. The Giants have a quarterback because they gave Daniel Jones 150 or 140 million dollars. But if every deal is like I hear is not re- like the last two years of any deal is fake then you don't really have a quarterback. So you should still be taking some kind of swings, which is why I kind of think J.J. McCarthy might end up a giant. Yeah, I, could, I think I that's think, why. I think he's going top eight, I'll say. Oh, yeah, I think six is the deepest he'll go uh, far and away. I think there are four quarterbacks going in the top six picks, which is why I'm as keen mm-hmm. on trading out of three as I am because I do think Minnesota wants to leap – um, the Giants at six. I don't I, I, like the Chargers and Cardinals sitting there. They can both trade back. They're in prime. That's where it's like, yeah, mm-hmm. let's not be too greedy because I do think the Cardinals will trade back as they showed last year. The Chargers could do anything. They have no receivers. Uh, <laughs> they'll get Jim JJ Hart. McCarthy. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, if he wants to trade up from five to three, give us Herbert. I, I'm willing to sacrifice that. I'm willing to. If you're the Chargers and then we'll get it, would you do five for Jefferson? Just straight up. Like Herbert gets a weapon. Vikings get up there. Maybe you have to throw in some condition. Or I was going to say, they've got 20, five, 25. 11, and 23. I was going to say, but it's Je- I don't know. He got to pay him this year or next year. That's I think that's what would kind of hold back his trade market. Like, of course, if you get him, you're going to pay him, but. You want as many cheap years as possible. Yeah, it was the 2020 draft, so I think you'd have one year left. Like he's eligible now, and I, you only do that trade okay. if he's going to. But I think next year is his fifth right. year. Okay, so he is. Yeah, he's done three full years. No, he's done four full years. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Last year, okay, last year I forget because he was hurt, but yeah, last year was his fourth year, so he is going into year five on the fifth year option. Would the Chargers just be like, you get your quarterback? We would just, we cannot have Quentin Johnston wide receiver number one. <laughs> or two. Uh, <laughs> or three. I saw that last year. Yeah. And... That's, I would need, I would need Jefferson plus at least 23. I can't just. Yeah, I'll say, I don't think you're getting 11, but yeah, you could probably get, or a future. But it's, I mean, it's kind of like what the Panthers just did. Obviously, we're talking about different caliber receiver, but DJ Moore is not a scrub by any stretch. You know At what all. I mean? Like, to get up that high, I thought Justin Jefferson had two years left. One year left, if he's outright telling them, I'm not, re- I don't want to work with a rookie quarterback. Yeah, if he's dragging his feet at all, then. You've got Addison. And the more I'm talking about it, I'll take, because uh, spe- it's three, not five. I'll take 11 in Jefferson for, for three. Man, I bet you would. I, I would. Again, I'm a kind man. I'm a fair, honest fellow. Well, they go what verse at eleven and be sitting pretty. That's like a ideal, like an ideal draft, right? I would I, only trade down. Dog. I wouldn't draft anybody ever. That's the key. 
I I put out a mock the other day where all I did was trade down. And someone was like, is this serious? This is the worst draft I've ever seen. I was just like, yes, very serious. I made 19 first-round trades. <laughs> of course, this is exactly what I think is going to happen. Love it. And it's one of those, that third or fourth, it's always nothing until it's like, oh, wait a minute. Wait, the Chargers botched everything? I can get Keenan Allen? <laughs> like, no no questions asked. I could just get just walk right into Keenan Allen. And you just get Keenan Allen. We'll be back next week with a new future album in tow and whatever else decides to happen in the world. Uh, I made it through the Wildcats, whole- please don't piss me off. Yeah, they might. Please don't piss me off. Might. Oh, yeah, I got, we won't record before then. Who do you got cutting down the nets? What a stupid question. I can't wait to hear this answer. <laughs> it's gonna, I, probably UConn again, to be honest. Like, if we're just being honest, probably UConn again. This could be the Kelvin Sampson year. There keeps being no number one seeds in it, which is encouraging. But I'll go Kentucky, surprisingly. I think Rob Dillingham scores 80 points every game. Reed Shepard, 20, 20, and 20. And Calipari does not piss me off. Things that we can all count on. That seems likely. Um, just based off that Ken Palm stat that everyone loves spitting out this year, you're going to be top 20 offense, top 23 defense. Mm-hmm. I think there's four or five teams that fit into that. Uh, so I'm going to pick one of those four or five teams. And UConn is one of them. Mm-hmm. Though I will say, the the past like four UConn titles, they've all been not the consensus number one overall. I never are, yeah. <laughs> yeah so. so that's what makes me most concerned about, like I'm not picking Purdue. They're out. Fuck them. Uh, <laughs> Purdue's yeah. out. You talk like about. Like Houston's in there. Houston's in that list of yep. like the top 20 everything. I think UNC is as well. UNC is in there as well. So I'm I'm going to go UNC. This would be a very UNC-ass year for them to win it. Especially so since I, they just lost in the the conference tournament. I, I like picking a team coming off a loss, that, that reason. There's also the, I think it's the last 30 years, no team that hasn't made it to at least the, I think, semifinals of your conference tournament has won a championship. So they posted like the top 20 teams and the ones that have done those. Right. You find that Venn diagram, that's probably one of your teams. But I don't listen to the facts. Cats all the way. (laughs) 